we go. Building, 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 building. And no, this is not the this is not the March sixth stream that I mentioned in my video yesterday. That stream will be me actually making building plans. I'll actually be like designing stuff. This is um, like modding live, basically. Um, it has been a long requested feature that I set up an ability for people to make plot building plans in the game, just like city plans, where you do all the work in a settlement, export it, turn it into a city plan, into a, a building plan somehow. And I've got most of the workflow figured out in my head, and it's just a matter of finding the time to do it. Well, now we now we have the impetus to do it because there's the game jam coming up, so that'll open up the door for more folks. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start it up. I don't know if we're gonna finish tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna. It might it might be that I get kind of like the baseline idea down and then I pass it off to somebody else to run with because I have a distinct lack of time of late. Um, I have three major important projects to do simultaneously right now, limited time to do them. And tomorrow morning I am on uh, daddy drop off duty, taking the kids to school. So I gotta get up bright and early. So here we go. Uh, world member two, are we building the building to build more buildings? That is the plan. Yeah. We're actually going to build. The first thing we're going to do today is build a new settlement in a cell. We're just going to make like the most barren settlement possible. Like, I don't know what format it's going to take. I don't know if I'm going to do like a world space. That's just like a big giant flat infinite world. I might do that. I don't know. Um, oh, hold on. My this is a reminder. Hit record. <laughs> I told this is a reminder. Uh, hit I told my Echo to uh, remind me to hit record because I kept forgetting and it said hit record so clearly she can't pronounce record or maybe I can't maybe that was, that was on me it was my bad what am I blaming the machine for it's probably me San Jonavik how would that work exactly so if you're not familiar with the process of making a building plan, generally what we do here, I'll show you guys what it kind of looks like. And we're not going to do it right now, but I'll, I'll show you roughly what it looks like. I think we have some in here. I don't know if we, I think we usually clear them all out, but maybe some, one of our authors left one in here. Rob Bam, Ram Beer, the Rear Bunker. That sounds like one. Yeah, here we go. So, oh, no, nope, that's not, that's actually a cell for a thing. Uh, Sherlock building stage, maybe. Nope, that's an empty one too. I guess we gutted all the we gutted all of our building cells. Usually we have a cell in here that we just that's just full of junk. Is it this one? That's just two building stage? Nope. <laughs> Looks like I've been good about cleaning them out. Um Yeah, none of these have the stuff I wanted to show you guys. But anyway, we'll we'll come into a cell like this. And we lay down one of these alignment helper things, which shows you roughly the size of a plot. And then we just design the building in here, which is dragging all the walls, dragging the stairs, dragging the door, all that stuff. Um, and then we do some processes to get there. Well, all the building, the placing down of items, you could do in the game too. And then we can import what you built in the game into the CK to do like the final little fiddly steps. Or in some cases, if it's a small enough number of items, you could skip the CK steps entirely and convert the files that are exported from the game into uh, a file that our automation scripts can use to generate a building plan. So the ideal would be to have people build in the game, import their work into the CK and do the final steps because there are some steps you can't do with our automated tools. So for one is nav mesh. You can't nav mesh the buildings without doing coming into the CK. Uh, another is that you will hit the limit on the number of individual items that can exist. So when we do our buildings, I'll show you guys one of our buildings. So let's go to Wasteland Lounger, the classic. We go to static here. Wait, is it not called that? Or do I not have, did I forget to load SS2 up? No, it says it's loaded. Okay. It must be named something odd. Um, all right, we'll just do KG Sim because I think a lot of the buildings are named that. What about weapon? What's the weapon store? Is that in here? <laughs> there we go, weapon store. So what we end up doing is instead of 
having each of the individual items that make up the structure be in their own their own little item. Nope, this isn't it either. Where in the heck are all of our actual things? All right, here we go. Here's a static collection. Please be something useful because I'm, I'm now, there we go. Okay, so like this right here. So this is our dead end weapons. And it's actually made up of all these individual items. So it's made up of, some, of a few different shack walls, um, this machete with the word rep weapons written on it, and the dead end sign. Like this is the structure. So we combine these into a static collection and then we export them as a new NIF, and then we get a custom model of it. And then that custom model, you can do extra stuff to it. And then like, here is the final model. So it is now named blah, 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 bunch of folders, weapon store, SA. I don't remember what SA stood for. That was a thing back in some settlements one, it meant something, I don't remember what it means now. And we turn it into a single model, and then there's some extra stuff we can do to it to make it act more like its own model. And it works a lot better this way. You can do it without this, we could have just spawned in the four walls and the sign and the machete and it could still work, um, but it works a lot better if you do this step. So the ideal is the only thing you're doing in the game is just the item placement and then everything else you come in here and do. So it'll say, so people who are just really fast at building in the game or who just know where all the stuff is, because I think the biggest hurdle to look, to doing this work in the CK is knowing what everything's at called because you're used to it being called one thing in the game and it'll be called something totally different in the creation kit and you got to get used to like what category it's under what type of item it is so it's just a lot of getting used to stuff um i think what's going to end up happening on the day of the jam is a lot of times or a lot of the chat that's set up on the we are builders discord is just going to be people asking for what is this thing called in the ck because they're going to know what it is in the game no idea how to find it in here so um in the ck it's just drag and drop it's pretty easy, but it's intimidating. So uh, we're gonna try and make it so that people can do it in the game. So that is the goal for today. I'm gonna so I'm gonna start by just making a really dumb settlement. So you know what? I've never done a world space one. Let's do that. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. We're gonna figure out some stuff today. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and go to new, and we'll call it. Um, all right. Well, well, this is gonna be called the. Uh, what am I going to call this tool? I got to come up with a prefix to it. We'll call it um, SS2BT for building tool. We'll call it that. And then the, the world is just going to be dummy world. Sure, dummy world. I like that. Perfect. We'll even name it that so it shows up in your in the game, you'll see the you'll see dummy world. All right, parent role space. We'll parent it to the Commonwealth. That's fine. We don't want any LOD. We're not going to do anything with any of this stuff. I don't think I need any of this stuff. I really don't know. We're about to find out. This might be this might go terribly wrong for me. Um, yeah, we'll do fixed dimensions. We don't need a, we don't need infinite cells here. We'll do it. What's the What is the game load in? Uh, we want center cell to be zero. So I'll X offset, and I don't want any offsets. Fixed dimensions. I actually don't know what this means. I think it will load five, right? So if I do five by five, is that what that means? We might just delete what I'm about. We might delete everything I'm just about to do. Anybody here who knows what, the, I've never done a world space. I'm just figuring it out right now. Let's see here, let me read through chat real quick and see if somebody here knows what I'm about. See if they know I'm about to make a mistake. Oh, you know what we can look at? Let's look at one of these other ones. Fixed dimensions, world map scale. I don't know what any of that means. What is this? Water environment map. No landscape, no LOD water. Well, we definitely, we don't want any LOD water. We do want sky though. Let's see. Location, diamond city location. Okay, we'll create a, we'll create a, uh, location record while we're doing this. Let's just do BT world data location BT dummy settlement location. There we go. Sure, you can be parented to this Commonwealth, one of the options here. Let's see, Commonwealth location. There we go. And then we gotta add our workshop keywords. So it's like workshop, uh, location type workshop, location type settlement. 
Oh, I missed the second one. Workshop settlement. What are the other ones we need? Hold on, I took a bunch of notes before this so that I wouldn't be floundering around. Nope, I didn't write down the, which keywords they are. What are the other ones? It's located, there's three location types that are useful to have. Location type, we don't actually need clearable. We need, I think those are the ones we actually need. Workshop and workshop settlement, I think is all we actually need. Uh, that should be fine. Okay. And then, okay. And let's see here, let me go back to chat now that I got the easy stuff done. Name the settlement red light zone, duck a duck. Man, you must be like scheduling your whole life out every week and following a rigorous schedule to get as much done as you do. Uh, something like that. Yeah, my schedule, my life is pretty, pretty heavily scheduled. It's more like I have, um, like blocks of time to do certain things like this many hours to focus on this project or like any spare moments you have in this day, go toward this project. Uh, and then smaller things get scheduled out. Yes. Like, uh, but yeah, it's not as hardcore. Like I, there, well, there was a time in my life I tried to do the, uh, the Elon Musk, he, he is known for scheduling his life out into like blocks of 10 or 15 minutes. And like, I tried to do that and it's, it makes me miserable. Cause I feel like I lose control of my life. Like past me has full control of current me. And that's, you know, some people think that's freeing. I find that terrifying. Um, so I'm, I've loosened it up a little bit, but I do try and get a lot of stuff done every day. Right tag, your dog. I heard you like build, building buildings, so we put uh, so we built you a building so you can make more buildings. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That is our goal for today. Uh, computer says no. I sent you a Discord message the other day. Would love if you could read that one. Uh, I will look at it in a little bit. Let me let me finish what I'm doing here. Uh, well, as, as far as uh, catching up on chat, let's see. Choo choo cannot stay, but very glad you see these tools starting to come to life. Yeah, hopefully. I will uh, get them to at least a baseline point because I think there are other people who can tackle some of this stuff. I don't think I have to do it all myself. There's another. There's enough people motivated to see this come to life. Hopefully, it'll. I can pass pass the torch, pass the baton. Uh, Sam, are you concerned about the next gen update and how it could complicate us to another mods? Not really. I think. Uh, I think we'll 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 survive it. I think. Um, I don't anticipate a lot, to be honest with you. I anticipate like handful of bug fixes, um, some sort of texture update. I'm not, I'm not anticipating much, but who knows? Maybe it'll surprise us. I've sent them a pretty heavy list of bugs that I would like to see fixed. So hopefully those get fixed. That'd be amazing, but no idea. Uh, let's see. World mapper two center cell is the origin cell. So I don't want to mess with that. We'll leave that at zero by zero. I'm just curious about this fixed dimensions. How do I set the fixed dimensions? So that's the only thing I'm like confused about right here. Is it this is usable dimensions? And then is this X, Y in units or is it in cells? And if it's in units, I think, I think what is a cell 2048 by 2048? Is that right? 49 or no, is it 4096? I can't recall. Commonwealth as a as a reference. Yeah, what is Commonwealth? Well, I don't want anything as big as Commonwealth. I want something very baby, very little. So it's maybe these cell coordinates I need to do. Maybe I do something like negative three by three, negative three by three, and then that gives us a three by three grid. Or I guess that would actually give us. So this would go as a five, right? Because zero is a cell. So we actually, so this is actually perfect. If I do this, it's like exactly the area. This will always load into memory, which is what we want. Nick Carter, are you looking forward to any games in 2024? Oh my God, the, I got to show you guys a, a game. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for streaming this, but I don't care. It's so freaking cool looking. Like I saw this and I'm like, I, I would probably, uh, if this had come out before Fallout 4, this is probably what I would be modding right now. Um, it is called Kingmakers. Have you guys seen this trailer? This is, this game looks freaking incredible. We don't know where he came oh, oh, from. oh, hold on. I think I have my, my PC is, let's see, let's do this. Can you guys hear this? But I'll tell you, he built our village into a city. So it looks like a simple He's the one who trained our medieval army. city builder, he army builder, kind of banner lords vibe, but way more NPCs. From. But if you think you can stop him, you're already dead. 
And then, back to the future, Army of Darkness. <laughs> We've got guns. Oh no, the horse. Oh, but I'm a sniper general. Oh, he brought out the machine gun. I like the one-handed grenade. Still get, look at that, RTS, RTS controls. Get out of here. And attack helicopters, because why not? <laughs> and then the moment I got sold on this, it's coming up right, it comes, I don't know where it comes in the trailer, but it's right near the end. Look at this. So you go back to the future to scavenge for supplies, and the future changes based on what you're doing in the past. And it's like, holy crap, that looks so awesome. So yeah, just, just absurd. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of like, I'm, I'm jealous that they came up with the idea, because it's kind of, it looks like if they, if they have like some sort of, uh, um, what would you call it, like uh, empire management, where you know you get to choose the like laws and roles of your people. I'm like, this is like dream game stuff for me right here. Like the, the you get to have, you get to have past, present, and future all at once. You get to have the city building, the army building, uh, and then you get it's a, it's a power trip because you're the only guy with guns. Oh man, so cool. So, uh, not the, the uh, company making it is the company who made Hello Neighbor, which I know I've never played that game, but I hear people are really angry about it because apparently they did a really good job in their alpha and then the, re the actual released game was no good. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt with who's making it, but it looks pretty cool from the trailer. Okay. So, let's see here. Um, 250 by 250 is a sell. All right, so I think this feels right, like having the two by two. Um, all right, let's go ahead and hit OK here and see what happens. I feel like worst worst case scenario, we just have to delete the cell. It's like it's no good. Wilderness, okay. We got our wilderness, and we got a nice blank box. All right, so now let's put a COC marker in here. So this is like where you get teleported to when you come in here. Uh, static. Oops. COC. COC marker heading. There we go. Let's just drop this right at zero zero zero. Whoops. I missed a zero there. Zero. Oh, you know what? I think that's floating in the air. Yeah, look at the ground land. It was underwater. Why did they do that? That's weird. All right, we got to fix our, our world space. Give me a second here. World space is... Uh, we're going to do... Let's see. We don't want water, I guess. Can we do none? No, we have to have water. All right, default land height. Let's swap these. Let's put the water underwater. That feels better. Let's see how it does with this. Does it like that I just swapped that, or is it like I generated my world and now I'm boned? Do I got to start over? I think so. <laughs> we gotta start over. All right, redo. Okay. Uh, uh, there's probably a way to fix this, but I don't care. It's quicker to just do this. So we're just gonna type delete here. Uh, so editing rather than create a new one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then we're gonna go new. Create a new one. Dummy world. Dummy world. So we wanted to parent it to the Commonwealth. I don't know if this is necessary, but that is what I'm going to do. We're going to move the water to be down low. And we want negative two, two, negative two, two. Fixed dimensions. No LOD water. 
I think that's it. Alright, and then we grab you. We head over into our new, hopefully fixed world. Hopefully that isn't underwater. There's a water under the ground. There it is. Switch you to zero, zero, zero. And all right, now we're off to the races. All right, let's save this and we're gonna call this SS2 uh, building tool, I guess. Sure, that works for me. And then we're gonna load this into the game and make sure that this little bit that we didn't fail at our world space because I've never done I've never done a world space before. I have no idea if this is the best way to go about this or not. And we're gonna get rid of our delete guy. There we go. All right, so I'm I like to to do this nonsense. Oh, I better disable this stuff so it doesn't cause any issues. We're going to turn off Workshop Plus because I'm going to be doing some stuff that might interfere with it, I think. All right, so we want SS2 building tool .esp. And let's pop in the game and see what happens. Nope, that is not the right cell. Oh, you know what? I know what i got to do. I remembered I, am, I have a dual install because I don't want to ever accidentally... release the wrong stuff there we go and we need a third my uh, my desktop's about to look like my notepad plus plus usually does here all right all out for f4se here we go all right here we go Arisa, have you reached out to many other creators to show off ss2 no, not really. I'm just rely. I let that's your that's what you guys do for me. You guys tell everyone about it. I feel I feel very uncom like outside of making trailers, I feel super uncomfortable marketing. I feel like it's very it, it feels very odd to me to like go talk about that I'm making things. I would rather just show people. That's why I like trailers. It's like here I made the thing. Check it out. See if you like it. Um and then, oh, I got. I can't go right. That's right. I can't go. I can't actually go here. I need to. You have to have a named cell to go to. So this is our cell, right? With our. Is this the one that has? No, we need to go to this cell. It looks like is cell number two. This one. So we're gonna call this SS two BT. Uh, dummy cell zero. I guess. Wait, we can look at. There should be. Here we go. Okay, so that's negative one, negative one. That's very odd. Maybe this is one of those things with the that was in the world that I need to take a better look at. World space here. Dummy. No center x, center y, zero. Okay. I don't know why this one is near negative one, negative one. But all I really care about is I want coordinates to be zero, zero because that's important for what we're trying to do here today. So, uh, sorry, zero, zero. Save you. So now we have somewhere we can actually COC to. All right, let's try that again. I like when I get into making or working on a type of mod I've never done before. And I actually get to learn some stuff instead of just showing you guys how to do it. You guys are just as likely to know this over me. Sam, is HQ 3.0 still on track for March release? It is. It is. We've, uh, we've got some of the features. I wouldn't say done, but they're like the interface is all done. They're largely working. We're just bug fixing them right now. Oh, come on. Come on. What did I do wrong? All right. So, oh, I know what it is. Forgot to copy it to my play directory. So my play directory wasn't even aware of this name change yet. All right, and we go again. But yeah, HQ 3.0 with the automation and uh, a new system I'm working on that uh, will make will make it good for people who want kind of a hybrid play style. Where they're like, yeah, I want I want some automation, but I also want to be able to like pick certain things myself. So trying to find that middle ground because always whenever we have automation, I like to give you guys as much control as possible. There we go. 
So the goal, let's say I've never actually, again, never done this, so we're gonna experiment. What happens when we walk to the edge? Do we get to an edge or is there just, do we fall off the world? Is there an invisible box? What's about to happen here? Death. The screen just goes black. Oh, that's interesting. All right, so we need to build, <laughs> we need to build a big collision bounds around the edge because the world just goes black. So that's good to know. All right. Um, all right, so let's grab our collision, which is, which one is it? Collision plane, here we go. All right, so, all right, we'll hide you. Move you to the end of the world here. Oh, you're so tiny. All right, let's make you bigger so easier to see this. There we go. And then we'll run you way, oops, way over here. And I guess we don't we don't need to go all the way to the edge. Yeah, why not? This will this is gonna feel like a SimCity map. Go right to the very edge. We just want to protect players from falling off the edge. I mean, no one needs. The, oh, oh, that was weird. When I went over the edge of the cell, it reset back to the zero 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 coordinate. That's crazy. Did not expect that. Okay, I guess we won't go over the edge a little bit. We're gonna go. We're gonna cut it, cut it a little short. Just because I don't want to be irritated with that. And we're gonna have to go like up stupid high because you know players are gonna build walls to try and get up there. Or stairs, and just to try and see. Push the limits. That's what we like to do when we play Bethesda games. All right, and then we will rotate this. And stick you way over here. And I gotta be careful not to push over the edge or it just <laughs> loops back around. Uh, so wild. I don't think I've ever seen a world space do that in the game. Oh, I accidentally have both grabbed on somehow. All right, and then I should be able to just duplicate these, rotate them around. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. What did I do? All right. There we go. All right, why is that one so low? I don't like that. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a little uh a playpen <laughs> for the for the player. Okay. There we go. And then we need to, let's see, what's the next step? So now I guess we need to start setting this up as a settlement. So we've got our location record. We need an encounter zone. Where are encounter zones? We need to go to world data encounter zone. And we'll just call this dummy EZ. All we want is the workshop and never resets. I think that's all we, oh yeah, we can go ahead and set up this. I don't care about any of that stuff. There we go. All right, where are my notes? Because I don't want to waste a lot of time on redoing stuff. Let's see, keywords, encounter zone. Um, I think our, because I set this the location at the world type should already be set on all the cells, I think. Maybe not. Or did I forget to set it on the world space? Let's check. The world spaces. Nope, I didn't set it. All right, BT. And I think this should just end up applied to, yep, there we go, applied to all the cells, cool. So now all of these cells should end up as part of our location. Um, okay, then we need to create a registration quest to tell the workshop system about this, because I do want people to be able to test it with settlers for pathing. I think that'll make it easy. All right, so SS2BT uh, workshop registration. 
Uh, what is it? Probably like 42, I think is about right. And I don't think I need anything else here. Uh, I think you need a couple of stages. I think you need 10 and 20. I'll double check. And then we need, I know we need a ref collection. Uh, let's see here. Peter says, no, did you see the spoilers for the Fallout Magic set? I saw a few of them, but I decided I'm going to stop looking at them. I'm going to just wait till I buy those decks, because I, I have to have them. I'm a sucker. They got me. Workshops, zero. And let's see. This is going to be, we're going to need like a few things here. Location, has keyword, that seems right. Location type. Workshop settlement, yeah, that'll work. And then we want, because we're trying to find the workbenches. Nope, not has key. We want has key word. Workshop workbench, I think, is the. Is that it? No, workshop. Oh, let me just bring it up. Let's see, we want container. Workshop. Not a faux, shit, faux workshop. We want an actual workshop here. Workbench. So this is the one we want. Oh, it, it was just being slow. I was being impatient. There we go. All right. So we want... Uh, oh, it's just workshop keyword. That's what I was looking for. Workshop keyword equals one. And then there's one more setting I need in here. Oh, and then we need to make sure it's like in the actual location we're setting up. Which should be our new dummy location. This BT. There we go. All right. And then that should do it. Okay. And then we add our script. Workshop add location. There it is. And I think we just set this to these two things we just set up. Yeah, that's fine. Wait, do I need to set this? Initialize stage down is 20, which we created. I don't remember if we need 10. Let me double check. Let's check this script here. Uh, da, 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 da. Set stage 20. I don't think we actually need 10. I don't remember why I wrote that down. Now let's do a search for 10. Do we need it? No. Right, it might be that um, something else from outside sets it. So we'll just leave it. It's not going to hurt anything to have an extra stage. There we go. All right. So then in theory now this thing will register once I create the workbench. We'll register. But we're going to set up a bunch of random stuff. So we're going to set up our workbench here. And okay. So here's a tricky one. Where do I set this? I guess. Because I'm trying to give the player lots of room to build. I don't want this thing getting in the way. So I think we got to set it. Hmm, what's the best place to do this? So we need our, where's our COC marker? So we want this to be easily accessible. We need this, I guess we can just set it off because really what we want is a, let's see, we want the alignment helper. If I could spell alignment. We want these guys. We want this guy. Uh oh, where'd he go? Where did you go? Uh, oh, they're under the ground. Okay. There we go. All right. So we don't need, let's see, that's, why does that say one by one? And it's clearly not, or did I drag two one by ones out? One by one. Oh yeah, I did drag two one by ones out. There we go. All right. We need an alignment helper. Two by two, there we go. And we need a three by three. And we need an interior. Okay, so really like this is all the space we actually need. We need this to be like over here. All right, so we can just move this kind of off to the side a little bit. 
We'll move you over here facing the workbench and where these are going to be. So these are all going to be at zero, zero, zero. And okay, good. It didn't go into the ground. And we're actually going to change this. We're going to make our own alignment helper and we're going to make this guy visual. Oh, I'm going to need to make a new mesh for this. Okay. Cause I thought, I thought maybe that these were checked in with is marker, but it looks like I had that baked into the mesh. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have to make some new meshes. All right. That's fine. Hope that I can remember how to do that. Been a minute since I messed with this kind of stuff. All right, I'll do the same thing to this guy. All right, let's go visual. Just copy the name. Oops. Missed something on that one. Where'd he go? Oh, come on. Let me click it. Let me click it. And this guy's like just shrinking down just a little bit. I wanted to put him at one, unfortunately. I'll have to do something about it. I guess these are just going to be the visual aids. They're not going to actually be the export things, so that'll be fine. PT, oh, we did an underscore in between. Okay. Okay, and then this guy. I'll go ahead and create his thing first before I forget. BT. Wait, 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 wait. What is that? Why does that have such a weird name? Alignment helper. I'm in helper interior. There we go. All right, SS2 BT visual. Oh, we could have left that open, put you at zero, zero, zero. Okay. So basically what we're hoping for here is I'm going to add like some uh, controller boxes over here so that the player can like activate, you know, like there'll be like one for each plot size. So the player can activate whatever plot size they want to work on. And then that, uh, they'll build a toggle, the visibility of this thing, like on and off so they can see, you know, how am I doing on my, on my boundaries? Um, and then can work accordingly. And then we'll have another set of levers that are like level one, two, three, whatever lever you act, whatever button you activate, the items will get attached to be part of that level and the rest of them will disappear. And then you'll switch to a new level and it'll reshow your other one. So then the player will have like three buttons. I guess we'll do four. We can do level zero and they'll be able to quickly click and show and hide their, their items. That's kind of the rough idea of what I want to set up today. Um, but I want to set this up as a proper settlement so that people can also test like pathing and stuff. So on that, we actually need to nav mesh this place. And I think I can just quickly do it here with a recast based generation, include landscape. Sure. Let's just see what happens here. Did it degenerate nothing? <laughs> I think it generated nothing. Just totally failed. Thanks. Nav mesh generation. Let's see here. Region minimum size. Shouldn't have to mess with any of this stuff. Include landscape. What if we do havoc based generation? I've never used this before. So we'll just go, okay, let's see what happens. Oh, something's happening. We'll see if it crashes. All right, well, that's doing whatever it's doing. Hopefully not crash on the CK. Let's go back to chat. Uh, let's see here. Oh, oh, something happened. Something happened. That is not what I wanted, but it'll do. Cause really we just need, Oh, Nope. really we just need 
Oh, that's odd. It's just like all got eaten when I drag it over this way. Look at this. All gone. Why did it do that? What is going on here? This is crazy. Some weird stuff happening here. I wonder if it's because that's like the edge of the cell and it won't let the nav mesh go between the cells for some reason. What if I try this? Let's do zoom in real close. We'll grab a triangle. We'll try and extend it over here. Oh, my mouse just like jumped out of the window. He was just not having that. And it created it like right there. Okay, so this is odd. No idea what's going on here with this. Okay. Um, delete you. Close this. Save. Alright, let's look at the coordinates over here. So we have quite a lot more coordinates than I expected here. So we want to go zero zero. Negative one, negative one. Where are we at? Okay. One, negative one. So what happens if I just open up the nav mesh tool here and just start placing down stuff? Okay, I can make triangles over here. See, it's almost like it got, well, what about over here? Maybe I can't do it in this little area? No, I can. Okay, so something weird about the nav mesh that that thing generated. So I guess I gotta do it all by hand. So we're just gonna do, and we're not gonna do the whole giant area. I'm just gonna do kind of a quick and dirty Oh no, look, there's another like dead area over here. It really doesn't like, yeah, it must be like there's a cell boundary here. Let me turn on the cell boundaries. It must be something like you can't do it over cell bounds. But there's gotta be, obviously you can, or you wouldn't have the world nav meshed outside. So there's something I just don't understand here about world nav meshing. Um, so let's see here. Um, how do you view? There is a way to view the cell boundaries. Let's see, cell, whoop. finally cell no, world, is it under the, let's see, view, show hide window, no, pressing B, thank you. So I need to go to chat. You guys are going to know. Yep, I think that's what it was. So it was like, all right, yep, it won't let me go over the bounds. So how do we get past that? Because there has to be a way, right? There has to be a way. Is it something like the nav mesh like merges the cells together here? World space cells for finalize. All right, let's try this. Let's go in this cell. We'll do nav mesh generation havoc based. Sure. It's going to take a minute, and it probably is just going to fill up this whole cell. That's my guess. Got it. You have to nail. Okay, one cell at a time, then finalize them. Will it? Do I have to like carefully stitch each one next to the other? So like, all right, I'm going to go here and do this one now. Nav mesh. Have sure. Okay. Okay. So now I'm wondering if I have to like line up. Do I have to like line up the uh, triangles here, or is the finalize going to be smart enough to handle that so that I don't have to? Because man, what a pain! What a pain if you've got to do that by man manually here. Finalizing this should handle it. All right. I guess we're going to find out here.
All right, and then lastly, we'll go to this one. We'll just do one around each of the things, so I can do the whole place. Okay. It's also interesting. Let me see here. Where am I? Where's my... I got all twisted around here. It seems like the thing I set up where it was like limit the world space to this certain range did not work at all <laughs> because I set it up at 000, zero, zero hoping that that would be the center of the universe. And instead the 000, zero, zero is like in this little corner over here. Very odd. All right, so then we do finalize. Finalize world space. Okay. All right, I don't know if that, if that worked or not, but I want to check something else on this world space here. Um, let's see here. So I did the cell coordinates of negative two to positive two, fixed dimensions, center cell is at zero, zero. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is it this usable dimension thing that I needed to uh, change? We'll see what Commonwealth has. It doesn't even have anything in the usable dimensions. All right. Well, irrelevant. We didn't. Re we don't really need all that stuff. It was just kind of. Uh, could have been interesting for people who want to just use this as like a weird build cell for some reason. In fact, let's go ahead and give this place, let's give this place some sky. Uh, let's see here. How do I do that? Commonwealth, we're here to steal your weather and your sky. How do we do that? I don't see anything there. Climate data? Default climate? Default climate? Okay. All right, let's just see what happens when we pop in there. I guess we don't really care if we have weather. We just want it to be not dark in there. <laughs> yeah, Spaceballs reference, steal the climate. Need a giant vacuum. All right, I guess I don't need these goofy lines anymore. We kind of get, we get what's going on there now. Um, all right, let me finish what I started. Let's get the, um, get the rest of the basics of the settlement set up because I'm curious what happens if I just drop some settlers in there. So we're going to go ahead and set up a spawn point and it can go right next to here. So we'll call this our BT spawn point. And we need a workshop center, which I guess technically would be at zero, zero, zero as was our goal, even though that's not going to actually be the case since we have all this weird cell boundary. So like technically zero is like way zero, 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 or uh, center would be like over here somewhere. That's fine. We're not gonna use it for anything anyway. This is to be T center point. And then this one guy actually needs a location ref type center. Okay, and we need, what else do we need? Um, we need a container for the workshop. I actually don't think you need this, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just out of showing good uh, processes here. Because if any of you guys wants to make a settlement, you can roughly copy what I'm doing. Uh, what did they name it? What's the default one? Is it workshop and then is there default in the name? No. Settlement. Here it is. Container settlement. 
And this thing should be invisible so people can't just steal it like they could in a lot of Skyrim cities. Um, and then we need, oh, I guess we need to build our primitives too, right? We need to build our sandbox and our, let's see, grab you, just put default empty, default empty trigger. And I guess this, actually, you know, it'll be easier. Take advantage of these giant things we made. If they will load into memory. Oh no, now they're in a different spot. What's going on here? The world keeps growing. I wonder if it's going to be that, uh, yeah, what, what happened here? Or I wonder if I moved them by mistake when I was dragging stuff all over the place. Where are my collision planes? Where are they hiding? I feel like this was supposed to be over here. And then the other two are just gone forever. <laughs> I guess we could just make new ones. I don't actually know how you find them when uh, the world goes all crazy like this. This is, this is where uh, one of those things where X edit comes in handy. Because stuff like that where it's just rogue records disappear on you you can you can find it very easily in x edit also it does not seem to like rotation here okay there that one's in place now yeah that one they it just got gobbled up by the void yep there it goes all right let's go ahead and grab all of these and we'll make a trigger box and it should surround them all so I don't have to set the dimensions. There we go. And then we're going to sh shorten the height here because we do not want the player going up to the top. Well, for the sandbox, this is fine. It can be a little shorter. The other one will let them go right up to the edge. So SS2BT sandbox volume. And then we will clone this guy and turn this one into build area. Yes, and we'll let this one be a little bit taller. Whoop, just a little. We can't let them jump over the top. Okay, and then what else do we need? Um, we gotta link all this stuff up. So I think it's I think the build area links to the workbench, and everything else is the other way around. So we go linked ref, and this is gonna be on workshop link primitive. Right? Nope, clearly not. Workshop linked primitive with a D. Okay. And then we need to find our workbench, so we gotta zoom way in here. Peter says, no, why does this whole Navish thing not automatically come with a world space? Yeah, that'd be nice. I think um, <clears throat> I think most of the game engines have much easier easier ways to do that now than hand placing triangles. I mean, you can always hand place the triangles after the fact, but this might just be because Creation Engine's method of handling nav mesh is a little outdated. All right, and then we need to link to oh, this workbench here. There we go. And now I think the rest of them we link from here. So we go linked ref, and we want our spawn point, and then that's like workshop, link spawn, there we go. And then we need another one on the center, which we sent way over there. Workshop link center. There we go. And the sandbox, which hopefully we can just grab from here. Nope, grab the collision marker, of course. What if we look up? Do like this. No? Okay, we gotta do one of these. There it is. Workshop link sandbox. There we go. Let's see here. What are we missing? We got the sandbox. Oh, we need the container. That has to be linked too. All right. 
workshop link container. I think that is it. Because we could add edge markers if we want, and I could do that for people to test raids, I guess, would be the benefit to that. Um, let's save. And then we will set up some script properties on the actual workbench to make it easier for people to get control of. So we're going to do some stuff here. We're going to say um, max draws will do. Well, we just want you guys to effectively have infinite, right? So we'll just do 500,000 draws. This would ruin somebody's computer. And we'll do 50 million triangles. Let's see, is that 50 million? Three. Oh, one more zero. There we go. Although that's gonna that's gonna break the max int as it probably needs to be 16 million. I think that's as high as it'll integer will go. Uh because I think it's 8 bit. So Alright, let's see here. We will turn off allow attacks for now. Um We don't want to allow unowned, enable automatic yes. We don't want minimum recruits coming here. Recruit uh minimum recruitment prohibit random, yes. On one player false, we want to make the player have to go activate it. So if they leave this installed while doing a normal playthrough, it just doesn't become a settlement that uh, they have to deal with right away. Um, yeah, I guess we can have Brahmin here because it's not really an interior. We're not going to mess with any of that stuff. Not going to mess with the radio data. Ungrouped properties, you generally leave alone. So this should be good. All right, I think we're done. I think we created a settlement. <laughs> it's not a good settlement. But like that's the that's the technicals. That's all the technicals that we have to set up as far as I know. So let's go pop in game real quick and check, make sure that this works. Uh, oh, I gotta remember to actually copy the file over this time. So I'll take you and put it in here. And then pop in here. There we go. Okay, so then it was, oh, and I already forgot the name of it, but thankfully we can tab out nicely in Fallout. Grab our dummy cell. Um, yeah, I guess there's no reason not to just do this. So the COC from the main menu is nice for testing stuff. Um, oh God. <laughs> Why did that happen? Why did, what was wrong with my COC marker? All right, I guess we're gonna TGM here for now until I figure out why that happened. Wee! Oh, and I can't move. So there's definitely something misconfigured. Oh, there it goes. I didn't, did not like that fall. Oh, go, look, my markers are showing up. Okay, cool, they are visual, or at least one of them is. Looks like the two by two can be visit, can be viewed, so I can copy the NIF settings from that over to the other one. So that's good. All right. So if we do this, you need to clear the enemies. Okay. So we need to turn off starts hostile. All right. We got a few things to figure out here. Why did my COC marker get ignored? Uh, let's see here. Go to our world settings. Okay, what is going on here? Why do we get dropped high above the ground there? We're at zero for default land height. Do I need to check this in, use land data? No, we don't have any land data. So this has got to stay like this. We want to be able to wait. We want to be able to fast travel. We do want sky. I guess we can set our encounter zone, though. That's not, not the problem we're running into. I 
think I have a location. Did I not set it up correctly? Let's check that. BT world data location. Here we go. We've got our settlement location. Found the ref type. It's got the location types set up. It should be on all of our cells because I put it on the entire world space. Okay, but it's not set up here. Maybe this matters. Let's try this. BT. Maybe that's what the problem is. Um, that still doesn't explain why I'm getting why it's ignoring my COC though. That's very odd. All right, let's check out like something like Diamond City here. Small world, fixed dimensions. Don't know what any of that's for. Hmm. I wonder if this negative 2048 is, is important. Like that it starts at negative. Like it, maybe it really wants to set you 2,000 units up in the air. Very odd. Very odd. Oh yeah! Oh, where did my... Hopefully you guys heard that. Hopefully my sounds are working today and I didn't break them once again. Carvok, thank you for the donation. Just a little extra uh, to incentivize you to get this system completed so I can take it and make plots. Yeah, you're not the only one who's been wanting this system. Um, some folks on uh, our team who have been adamant against building in the CK, but man, the CK is where it's at when it comes to... Uh, meticulously placing items. It is far easier than the settlement tools. All right. I don't expect this to do anything because we already have the land here. We saw that earlier when I tried to change it, but we're just grasping at straws because I don't want to fall. I don't want players to have to <laughs> TGM in order to use this tool. Not particularly useful. Okay, let's see if any of these changes had a good impact here. So let's copy this to our play cell, or play directory, pop back in. We're gonna end up spending the three hours tonight just trying to get a basic settlement working <laughs> instead of making all the interesting tools that I had in mind. Oh, all right, and then we need our COC location. Dummy cell. All right, we're going to TJM just in case. Because I, I don't have faith that I've correctly fixed this. Nope, we are in the sky. And nowhere near our COC marker. Oh, but what we did do is we buried all our items 2048 under the ground. So yeah, that didn't help anything at all. We went even higher, and then we lost all of our stuff. Okay, so zero it is. Leave that alone. That doesn't help our situation. Is there a way to set up like the default cell? Is that a thing you get to do? Elevate cell data. What does that mean? By how many units? No, we don't want to do that. Edit. Anything in this cell we can do here. Um, let's see. Is your COC marker in the correct cell boundaries? It might not be. That is a good point. Let's bring up the boundaries again. I mean, it is next to our settlement. But, you know, I'm very confused about what cell it's trying to take me to. I guess it's probably trying to take me to zero, zero. So let's do this. Let's go. You actually are not zero, zero. You are negative one, negative one. Uh, so I guess we call this neg one, neg one. <laughs> very, very useful naming scheme here. And then this guy is actually zero, zero. Yeah, his coordinates are zero, zero. So let's zoom in on you. Zoom out and let's see where your border is. Okay, your border is right there. 
So let's move our COC into this cell. But the thing is that I was like, I it was definitely in this cell, right? It was within here, or was it not? Oh, I guess maybe it wasn't. So that was neg one, neg one. So then this one is, yeah, that was it. So this one is now zero, zero, because it was in this cell instead of, so it, it's looking for one in each individual cell. So I guess I kind of got to like put one in each here. So then this one over here, if I want to go into it, well, this is the only one I actually want. So let's just do it there. So let's zoom in on you. And then I think that's going to be this cell, which is negative one O. Dummy cell, neg one. Uh, oh, we're going to type. Actually, I need to start. I need to. Oh, I hate this. It's, it looks like negative 10 now. It's going to drive me nuts. Negative one zero, I guess we got to go with. These are terrible names. Um, all right, let's try this as our COC location. So I am no expert on world spaces, so I don't know why it's not, why it didn't set up. Like clearly there's some logic on the screen that I don't follow that I don't understand. Um, and if I had more time, I would spend the time, I would spend this time right now experimenting to learn that because that is how we got to where we are today with some settlements is I don't just, ex I don't, I try not to just uh, accept things as magic and <laughs> instead try and figure them out. So that way I can make use of the, what we learn. But tonight that will distract from our prototyping. This was what we're really trying to do tonight. What else am I missing, Shadow? Also must have the location of your settlement Addison. So I can't just rely on the fact that the whole world space has the location, that won't work. Oh, I hate when this does happens. Occasionally, the uh, game does not want to acknowledge my uh, copy-paste efforts. Uh-oh. All right, well, let's hope we got it right, because I did not TGM. Well, I guess I can TGM midair. That would be exciting. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we do this. Oh, we didn't mark the enemy thing. Okay, so exit out of here. And we want to mess with this. Star Tossel false. Oh, I bet I need location can be cleared. That's probably what I need on here. Let's try that. Clearable. We'll see if that helps. Um, let's see. Next location is cleared to own. Uh, we'll just check it in zone by player. We'll see how that goes. Because there's no, I'm not going to get a location clear trigger because there's no enemies here. I don't have a boss set up. Clearable workshop settlement, workshop settlement. Clearable workshop, workshop settlement. What am I missing? Is it four needed? Settlement, I don't think you need. I don't think you need actual settlement because settlement is something used by the radiant system and like uh, Diamond City is like flagged as a settlement. Um, and I only know this about the keywords because I had to learn a lot of this for um, HQ. The stuff I don't understand is the world space stuff. That space is, that stuff is new to me. Let's see if I got the player owned thing. I think that's how I want it. I basically don't want it to show up immediately in your workshop uh, collection is what I was trying to do with the owned by player, but I might have to set up like a enter trigger cell or something. All right, and then I gotta go do this silly cell name. Hopefully copy paste is working now. Hey, there it goes, it's back.
Oh, now we got rain. All right, so the weather's working. Okay, there's our workshop. All right, now we're gonna go TGM, TGM and build ourselves a beacon. And watch Jake show up. Because <laughs> I think I set the, the parent to uh, Commonwealth, so he might show up. That'd be kind of funny. All right, so if this is all working, although it might not work from COC because Workshop Parent may not have had time to finish setting itself up yet. So we may not get any settlers here. All right, let's do this. Let's go to, oh, you know what we're gonna do real quick? We're gonna test a Workshop Framework export because that's something else we need to test today. Settlement layout, export layout, export it. And this should go really fast. Or it should not work at all. That's also a possibility. All right, let's see if our log came up here. Uh, let's see, we need a another folder. Fallout for logs script user wsfw export let's see what we got what crazy number did i get assigned 761833 all right and we've got this we've got dummy settlement it's in building tool.esb we've got our linked objects what are all these unlinked objects Oh, I guess those are probably like the collision refs and such. Okay, I think we got it all. Uh, we've got our radio beacon, we've got our generator. Cool, seems to be working. Okay, that is one important step because those log files that it generates, those are gonna be kind of key to what I'm trying to do here. And uh, I might even enlist the help of, if we get close enough before midnight, so in the next two hours, I might enlist the help of ChatGPT to make me a CSV converter because that is something I found that it's really good at is data conversion where I just like uh, I could write a Utility to convert, you know this Chunk of data to this other format and now I can just upload files to chat GPT and it spits them right back out at me in the format I need um, And then I can even tell it to like okay now make a Python tool to do that for me and it's usually pretty good at it Okay, so we've got a settlement. Um, oh, you know what I was gonna do I was gonna pop into uh, a regular save and see if the settler's not appearing was just because that was from a COC because that could definitely be the case Or it could be like what shadow said that I missed a step. So we're gonna find out I Need a map marker you are correct Yeah, we'll have to put a map marker in there for sure Although again, we're not we don't actually want players to play with this settlement other than for testing like it's mostly the idea is people will go in there, build for something like this, um, and then go back to their old, to their normal save. Um, yeah, this should be fine without those two. You got a YouTube ad for SS2? I don't see how we're not we're not advertising. Yeah, I can't think of any I can't think of any benefit to like paying for ad dollars for SS2. That seems like a that does not seem like a very worthwhile use of money. Um okay, so now th this should work, I guess, because we are in a in a save that has workshop parent all set up correctly and everything. So now let's go ahead and TGM here. And do this once again. Oh, past it. All right. So, in theory, we just need to wait like 10 or 15 seconds and we should get one to three settlers. Unless I set this up incorrectly. Then that won't happen. Like, we're not going to have a build limit. That I expect. Or a build um, uh, barrier, which I expected. Because we did not make one. Although, I think... 
Somebody in the community has a tool to generate those, right? Oh, let's go while we're waiting. Let's go test the test our ball. Okay, so we've got a invisible wall right here, but I don't think that this is our collision unless I accidentally hid one of them. Remember how I created, I recreated two new ones? I wonder if the other two are still there and they're hidden, or this is that setting that's like the the cell is a fixed size. Definitely something funky, because it's detecting a max of 21 settlers, <laughs> which is clearly not true. We have no beds. We have no city plan. Okay, arbitrary border here. Let's see about over here. So we still got some issues to sort out. Phil, are you advertising for SS2 for us? Because that would be kind of hilarious. Are you, are you guys paying for ads on our behalf? Oh, <laughs> and my collision thing didn't work. <laughs> and now we're stuck in the abyss. All right, we got some things to fix. I, now, see, now we're getting into a territory. Oh, yep, see, here's these, uh, the ones that I thought were gone. They just kind of came back. Um, we're getting into that territory. Oh, look at this. Like everything got offset. Uh, we're getting into that territory of like now that me not understanding stuff is starting to be a problem. So we might need to do some of these experiments to figure out what the heck is going on. All right, let's grab where we might, if I can't get this figured out in like the next 20 minutes, I may, it literally will be faster for me to just go build an interior cell and set all this up in there than try and, uh, learn a bunch of stuff about world spaces so yeah i think what's happening here is the it's just like what the part of the the terrain that's loading just keeps changing and i have been moving stuff based on based on what i'm seeing and that's not how i should be treating this so i, I am definitely this is a case of i am not understanding how the world space generates the terrain and what it decides to display to me. Well, what if I hit F5 here? Yeah, so it's displaying different terrain now. Okay, so that's what that's what we're dealing with here. So I keep moving stuff around, expecting it to operate a certain way, and we actually need this. Um, can we do this? Let's go build area volume. Let's center this on zero zero zero. It should still maintain its size. Okay, we actually don't want this as the zero on the Z. And then this guy, so we'll leave the Z where it's at. We just want to center you. Okay, there we go. Now these guys are at least centered here. And then I can just use the, the bounding box here to represent, oh, 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 but, oh, I can't go over the edge because it's not loaded into memory. So I can't go that far. There we go, that makes way more sense. Ooh, these things are gonna be a pain. All right, we're gonna delete these collision boxes. I'm not liking that idea anymore because they're gonna just be a big hassle to manage. All right, let's get rid of you guys. There should be one more over here, there he is. Okay, and instead, let's do World spaces. We're gonna not do fixed dimensions. And we'll see if maybe that allows the terrain to generate infinitely, and then it will, in theory, just put up those like you're not allowed to go further than here. Anybody who knows more than me, feel free to chime in. Tell me I'm an idiot. I am okay with that. I am learning as I go here. I know the settlement stuff, I do not know world space stuff. All right, let's go into this save I've been using for testing a lot. Should work fine. So we still have something to fix because the we didn't get any settlers, which doesn't feel correct. All right. 
right, let's do C. C. And I also want to check. Check our check our quest and make sure that it actually ran. Let's see, it's running. It did find our workshop. Did it run its stages? Yeah, current stage 20. Okay, so I think the initialization worked correctly. Here we go. Okay, there is our signal. Now this this thing about the what what is that? What did we get here? Talk to Jake. Oh, it's it's trying to figure out a path to get to our objectives and it can't. That's kind of funny. All right, so then in theory, we, if we walk this way instead of falling off the ledge now, we should just get like that you cannot go this way warning when we get to the edge of our Two by two grid. Let's walk backwards until everything fades away. Or is it just gonna let us walk indefinitely? Do we have to like specifically set up those borders? I always assumed that that was automatic. Cause like if I go in the CK, I don't see like a giant wall around the whole Commonwealth. Will this just go on forever? I went so far, I, I got out of range of the signal. This is an interesting experiment. So apparently we can just walk forever? That is interesting. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Not useful right now. We'll figure it out later. Okay, so just be aware if you uh, if you're tinkering around with this. If I release it, you can just walk forever for now. Maybe we'll fix that. Maybe we won't. Um, what I'm really interested in right now is getting settlers, which we don't seem to have. But I do have a cheat command. I can get them for now uh, until we figure out why that. Actually, this might help. This trying to run this command, it might fail. Recruitment manager settlers three. Let's see if we get people here. One, two, three. Okay, they appeared. They can walk around. They're making a beeline straight for the plot spot. Let's build some plots. Let's see what happens. This is interesting. Here you guys go. Build away. Build yourselves a nice little city. Where's that guy going? He just wants freedom. He's going to try and find the end of the desert. Good luck. Godspeed. There he goes. Wow. He's, he's still going. I thought for certain he'd have turned around by now. Like once he got a plot assignment, he would just be right back here. I kind of want to follow him now. Oh, nope, he came back. He got bored of that. Oh, they don't have any supplies, so they can't actually build. All right. Okay, well, we get we know settlers work from the recruit manager, so for whatever reason, we're not getting them for free from this. I don't know why that is. Um, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. I can't, I will, this is like, now we're getting into the weeds of like, this basically works. We know it exports correctly. I can build in here. So we're at enough for prototyping. Now we can move on to the next step. So let's go to those statics. Actually, you know what I'm going to keep a list of problems that need to be solved. Um, world needs a border. Uh, let's see. Settlers don't show up naturally needs a map marker uh what else do we need to fix in there um that's enough for now we'll add more notes later as we as we find more problems for for future me or someone else to solve 
Um, okay, so we had one of the... One of our markers showed up correctly. I think it was this two by two. So I'm gonna look at what is different between this helper and these other ones in the NIF and try and make these ones work the same way or a version of them work the same way. So let's go meshes. I, I, I would honestly prefer if it was just the base ones because, but my concern would be if I change the base meshes that are already in the mod, then I might set up a situation where somebody didn't realize that was the case in their build, released building plan, and then all of a sudden there's a bug in a bunch of released building plans. So I will probably create a new folder for these. So we'll call this SS2BT, and we'll grab our, let's see, where is this? SS2 helpers. It's very odd. Whenever I'm working uh, on mods on the stream, I always have to like duck my head around to like try and see my second monitor around the uh, microphone. Somebody has to have a solution to this problem. These like fancy mic stands are very nice for keeping the mic in place, but they're, they're kind of in your way. Uh, all right, let's grab all of these guys. BT, and we just drop these in this directory. Okay, so let's look at two by two flat. Now you get to see the fun of digging into NIFScope. All right, so we've got, let's look at our flags here. Flag is 32. Let's look at our three by three. Flag is also 32. Uh, tri shape is 14, 14. We got an effect shader property on these. Okay, so it looks like this has got an editor marker and this one doesn't. I don't know if that matters, but we will. Hmm shouldn't matter. Does this have the editor marker flag? Yes, it does. All right, so let's look at our shader here. Okay, so I think to make this easiest, we're just gonna go, we're just gonna copy whatever's missing out of this NIF. So we're gonna grab this shader, seems to work. Grab this alpha, seems to work. Delete the old ones. We'll start with that, because I can't imagine this editor marker matters. Well, it might be that the way this one is set up here, maybe the, it's causing this to get hidden. Hmm. And this one isn't because it's only hiding one of them. I don't actually know how that works. All right, well, let's start with this. Change you guys to use our new BT three by three. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see what that does. We're gonna need to copy this folder into our directory, which I don't love, hate having loose files, but again, trying to move relatively quickly here. All right, so that's what we'll put in our uh, needs BA2 with meshes. All right, and then let's copy our oh. date modify. Where is our file? Building tool. Grab our cell again. And let's see if our three by three magically appears now. Will Thompson wanted to tell you I bought the East Empire expansion for Skyrim. Uh, so far, I'm really loving the mod. Awesome, glad to hear it. I actually have it on my schedule to uh, uh, get another patch out next month because there's some. It's it's pretty close to where I want it to be. There's a few things I want to add to it still though. Like there's a bunch of um, in Skyrim they did a lot more unique world spaces where it's like. Um, you go into what looks like a dungeon or a cave and instead of it being just part of Tamriel or just like a typical cave, it's actually technically its own little world. So kind of like what we're creating where it's doing the world space and the code for East Empire doesn't handle those very well. It thinks they're not, it, it basically treats them like they're another 
like it deals like a soul steam as a as opposed to a cave so then it can't capture them because we don't want you to just like capture the whole island or like we don't want you to like use like moon path elsewhere and just capture all of elsewhere we want you to have to capture individual dungeons so i need a way to distinguish like when a world space is literally just bethesda breaking up a dungeon into multiple locations and then i'll be able to add support for capturing those and then we got to do a whole lot of work of manual flag placement. People turned in a whole bunch of uh, screenshots of really dumb places the East Empire Company puts their flags where they'll be like on top of bridges or like poking through sewer manholes. All right, so this is still our two by two showing. So it must have something to do with that editor marker node. So let's try that. Let's get the names the same. We get everything matched up as close as pro close as possible here. So edit string index. Switch you to that. We'll go ahead and drop in this node, the editor marker. But we actually want. Okay, so that's interesting. So this editor marker is just a blank node. It's actually nothing. This shouldn't even be in here. This feels like the result of me doing something. Uh oh, I better make sure. I just realized I gotta make sure I'm in the right one. Let's close this. I might still be in the one that's from SS2, and I don't want to accidentally save over that. So I'll pop you open. I'll grab you. And we'll rename this string. Alright, are we matching now? Editor marker, yes. Save. And copy you guys again. All right, try to try again. This is a lot of what modding is. If you're not, uh, if you've not done it yourself yet, a lot of modding is just like trying random stuff. Pop in, see what happens till you get a working prototype and then you start tightening it up and make it less janky. Slightly less janky. So always a little bit of jank left in a mod. Whoops, sorry about that. You need an arm that overhangs from the back of the desk. <laughs> yeah, I need like a, or like a, yeah, I've got to like pin myself in a box or maybe suspend the microphone from the ceiling. Check if the other plant type are still there. They might just be overlapping. Could be. Yeah, I might have to like uh, raise one, raise it up into the air or something to make sure it's not, or make sure it's not just clipping into the terrain. That could be it too. Okay, so now, still not seeing it. So let's um, let's raise that up a little bit in case it is just a case of uh, it's clipping through the floor or something. All right, so let's go. You are fine. Why can't I click you? All right, let's hide you. Interior. All right, I guess we can move these back later. So let's move three by three over here a little bit. One by one, you can go over here. And then where is our interior? All right, let me get these up a little bit. All right, let's see if maybe that was just a case of... All right, let's do one more double check to see if we didn't miss anything. So we've got our... Flag 16398 on the base node. That seems odd, but that's what this one is too. BSX32. Tri shape is 14. Oh, where did our block list go? Tri shape is 14. 
We've, we copied our effect shader and our alpha, so those should be fine. I wonder if this has uh, ver vertex coloring. Does not appear to. Whoops. Let's see, what about our vertex flags? Do we have something weird on this guy? Nope. Everything looks the same. People who do a lot of work in NIFScope are saints. This is a special kind of hell to be digging around in these files and doing stuff with them. Like Pra and his crazy machine, the ACM making machine, he did that all in NIFScope because he is a damn wizard. All right, I don't think there's anything more I can do in there. Copy this guy over again. And we're back in the game, heading back in the game. Oh, grab too much of that, I just need that. Ran out of coffee. Way too early for that. One of these days I'm gonna actually somebody who's what who's usually in chat telling me I need to install a coffee machine next to my day. Next to my desk. The temptation is there right now. Oh, I just had a I had a fun uh buying experience the other day. So uh I still have a CD player in my car. And uh, my wife likes to listen to CDs still, and they, they're all like, at this point, you know, most of you probably haven't ever heard music off of a CD. <laughs> and those of you who have probably don't have any left. Um, well, CDs get very scratched up and the music starts to sound worse and worse. So I thought as a gift, I would find a CD burner and remake all those CDs. And I like bought bought some of the music online and, and put together some of the CDs. Um, turns out you can't buy those at a store anymore. It didn't even occur to me. <laughs> Went to a store yesterday and they're like, man, I don't think we've sold blank CDs in 10 years. I was like, oh Jesus, I'm behind the times. And I, and I was just reminded of that thinking about buying a coffee machine to put next to my desk. I'm like, I can still buy a coffee machine at the store, but I can't buy blank CDs anymore. I guess the same thing would happen if somebody went to NAST for blank cassette tapes. Okay, we still don't have a visible 3x3, which is concerning. Why does this guy show up and not the 3x3? All right, we don't have his marker checked, so that's good. Yeah, everything looks the same between these two records. I can't think of anything here that needs to change. So it has got to be in the mesh. All right, so let's get this thing exactly the same. So let's get the names the same. Let's have because you never. This is where you just never know with the NIFs. This is why it's it's like black magic. Sometimes you'll when you're trying to get one to work like another, just the silliest things seem to fix it for no apparent reason. Another thing I will. Okay, I'm gonna try that first. I'm gonna try one thing. The next thing I'll try is like if I just copy this whole shape into here. Does that suddenly make it work? It wouldn't shock me. All right, so we need this folder, 
into this one. And I guess we don't need to keep jumping back to HQ. I can do this from the COC menu and find out what's going on since we just need to see if these blocks appear. CDs don't get scratched if you put them away. Oh, I don't get me started on that. The uh, my my wife's CD collection is just in a stack. No cases, no sleeves. They just they just live in the console in the car. It's it's very disturbing. I actually prefer I actually prefer to drive. I drive generally in silence. Or, hey, it worked. Look at that. Just naming the top node editor uh, something. Whatever the hell I just named it worked. I don't know why that worked, but this is the black magic of NIFS. But anyway, back to my car thing. Uh, I tend to drive in silence or um, for once in a while I'll get into, I'll do books on uh, like audiobooks. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't, I don't usually mess with the CD player. It's my wife's thing, which is why it was going to be a gift to fix all of her CDs. And I gave I gave her sleeves for them as well. I need to I I wanted to give her like a CD book, like we used to have. But again, no one sold those. So I found finally found that at uh, office supply stores they still sell blank CDs. Not so much on the old music, uh, or like the CD collection. You know, like the leather band. What would you call like the zipper case things? What do you call those? Where you can stick a bunch of discs in there. Whatever the hell those are called. Couldn't find one of those in sh on short notice. Got to order that online. All right, so we've got, uh, I don't know why this works, calling the top node editor marker flat, but it does. And I am happy about that. So now we can fix the other ones. So let's go into here, up up our one by one and our interior. All right, so we're gonna assume we need to do, we're gonna just make it the same. There's, I, I could spend some time doing some individual tr troubleshooting here to figure out exactly what it was because I don't think it actually was that name I'm sure it was something like it's the name plus the editor marker flag or something like that but all right we need to copy this into both of these oh look at this this one's a disaster this one's got all sorts of shapes and editor markers all right copy you copy you Grab the alpha property, delete all of this stuff, and alpha property, delete, delete. All right, and then we're gonna just take it, just gonna go with this. This doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sure there's some logic under the hood that makes sense to the CK. And then we are missing the editor marker node in this guy. And let's make sure that this is nope, not the same flag. So this one is 32. All right, save you, save you. BT. And where's our COC location again? You know what, I need to just grab this. What's this one? this in our little note there we go there we go can I get to bought a used Final Fantasy 8 found out later it was scratched to hell cost of repair was $12 a disc for four discs, it was cheaper to buy a new copy for 25. Oof. So we used to do, back in high school, we used to do, um, and it somehow worked, we would rub toothpaste all over the back of our discs, and then you wipe it clean with like a towel. Like that's how we used to fix our, our music and PlayStation discs. I don't know why that works. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it always, and maybe it's one of those like, uh, not, I, would, I was gonna say old wives tales, but like the equivalent of that for kids, like kind of like the, um, the we were certain blowing in the Nintendo games was important. Okay, 
Okay, so it didn't. So we missed a few. So you can see, I like I named the top node, didn't fix it. So it's just like something very specific, and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we just got to keep trial and erroring until we get it. Oops, I did not need to open these again. I already had them open. All right, so three by three, one by one. Let's do one at a time here. So our BSX, or let's say start with the top node. A lot of times these flags are really important. Look at our BSX, we got 32 and 32. Try shape is 14, try shape is 14. We know we copied the alpha. We got our editor marker, we got our editor marker. So like everything in here feels identical. We've got the same name for the try shape, editor marker zero, editor marker zero. All right, so let's try this. Sanitize, reorder blocks. So the tri shape is on top, or the shader's on top. Okay, this is editor marker, editor marker flat. Yeah, everything looks correct in here. Alpha properties 4109. Effect shader, I mean, we copy pasted that, it can't be wrong. Okay, let's see, where is this guy? Yep, it's in the right directory. All right, copy you, paste here. And we need our CSC. Come on, give us big pink blocks on the ground. And nothing. Come on, <laughs> so ridiculous. All right, let's go double check one more time that it's correctly positioned in the cell. We're not at zero, zero, zero. No, nope, we're at 11, so it should show up. Let's make sure it's not tagged as is marker. Oh, there it is. There it is, we forgot to Point it to our new NIF. One by one. And, and then this one needs to go over to our new folder as well. Okay, okay. Save. And now we need to go back up to data. Okay, here we go. Hey, there we go. Okay. One of our problems is solved. Okay, so now we get into like the, the kind of the meat here of what we we're trying to do, which is like create some controllers to make this useful for players to set themselves up. So let's find some buttons here. Uh, go switch. What's the, there's like an institute switch. I think that'll work nicely for this. Mm -hmm. Let's do Institute. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go preview and start running through this stuff real quick. None of these is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Jonah Story, thank you for the subscribe <clears throat> and for triggering my favorite sound. What is that prop? There's like a nice like white looking button that you can click on. It's not that. Cannot think of the name of it. Let's look at our NIF files. Yeah, it's none of these. Hmm. Yeah, the one by the the one by the elevator in the institute. Oh, you know what? I left open another copy of the CK over here just for moments like this, so I can go in here and just find stuff without dirtying our plugin. So this is what those of you guys who are resisting the CK. This is what you end up doing when you want to find items that uh, you're not sure what they're called. Is we just load up another copy of the CK, dig around the cell, find the thing we want, or you can find it in the game, find the ID. I'm sure that's probably what you guys do. You can also do it that way. I'll look it up in here. Um, okay, let's see. What is that? Well, where is that button, first of all? There it is. This guy. This little guy. That's what I'm looking for. What are you called? DN136 elevator button. Okay. Not what I'd have called it. Ta-da! Here we go. This will work perfectly. All right, so we're going to name this guy SS2BT, and we'll call this um, button choose plot size. Name, sure, button. And we'll say the label will be choose plot size. Choose plot size. Here we go. All right, we'll go ahead and drop one of these guys into the world. All right, and um, I think I'm actually going to keep it over by the workbench just so that it's kind of out of the way. Because I don't, it's not something I anticipate people having wanting to switch a bunch. Um, we'll put it over here, away from the spawn point. And I might end up using this. I might reconfigure this and just make it like an all-in-one thing, where you just click on this and get a little sub menu or whatever. But for now, this will work. All right. So we're gonna get. We're gonna need a menu. So let's go to our messages. Oops. Uh, new. It's to bt menu plot size message box and we'll do cancel from changing it one by one yeah go away two by two three by three and interior Okay, there's our plot size menu, and then we will do, I guess we need to do a script now. So let's get onto this guy. What does this default script do? Uh, just handles the animation. Okay, so we can have a secondary script on here. New script. We're gonna put this in I guess I could put it in some settlements, but I think it's going to be safer to put it in its own namespace. All right, so we're going to put this uh, plot size selector. And I might just put the code in here for now and move it to a controller later. Because again, we're just in prototype mode here. Okay, so we basically want to do event on activate. Object reference AK activated by if AK activated by equals game dot get player. 
And then we want to do confirm equals plot size menu dot show. If I confirm equals zero, they hit cancel, so we do nothing. One by one. We probably don't need this if if block, but for now this is fine. And if. Okay, so then we're going to do something really basic with this. We're going to go object reference, uh, property, and we'll call these, we'll do uh, helper refs, auto const. Yeah, we don't need this block here. So we're just going to go get rid of you. And we'll just do else. Um, I, uh, let's see. Int i show index equals i confirm minus one i equals zero All i is less than helper refs dot length nice i'm gonna have to figure out something to hide all the items the player builds we'll need some sort of control request for that but this is just kind of giving you guys a rough idea of what i'm hoping for um so then we do if i equals i show index we know let's do yeah, that's fine. Helper refs i dot enable else helper refs i dot disable. So basically, we're just going to set these up. So whatever one you pick, that shows up. We're going to do some more stuff. We're going to want some sort of like central controller where it hides all the items the player built up to that point and like stores them all together. Um, but we'll do that in a bit here. Build you. What did I screw up? Plot size menu. I forgot to define the plot size menu. That makes sense. Message property plot size menu. Try you again. What did I screw up this time? Oh, it compiled successfully. Okay. So now we will grab our menu. Grab our menu. And our helper refs in order. So we need one by one, and then two by two. Okay, why can't we find that? Did that end up in another cell? Probably. Two by two, three by three, and interior. Here we go, here we go. And then we'll put all these back at zero. Oops, one, zero. We're gonna put it at one as the Z, just to make sure we can actually see it. And did we get them all? That looks correct. All right, so now we go into, okay, now I'm gonna just make the uh, BA2 file because I don't want to have a bunch of loose scripts hanging around in that directory either. So we're gonna just take a break and do that real quick. So let's go to our tools. Nope, I don't know what that file I just tried to open was, but we don't like it. All right, archive two, open this, grab our meshes. You guys are going in, scripts, B2, you're in. All right, now before I forget, let's go delete those loose meshes. Get that loose garbage out of here. All right, save you. Oh, we need dash main. And we want this in our data folder. Okay, bink, bink. Put that in there. All right, and now let's see if I did that. Oh, I know what we need to do differently. We need to, we're going to set these two initially disabled. Initially disabled. 
and we'll leave two by two as the default that will stay visible. All right, building tools. All right, let's try it out. Gavin yeah, Answer Away, we can have floors with snap points, an option when building, like the interior where walls thickness at the back means you have a little offset from the red guide. Um, I mean, we could have anything, but uh, this is where I'm just going to do the prototype and I'm going to let somebody else take over because <laughs> I have very little time left anymore. Um, and all of my available time for developing some settlements currently is going toward HQ 3.0. That is the most important thing for mine. But I thought this would be a good, while everybody's excited about the plot thing, if I got kind of the general idea going, somebody might be willing to pick up the torch while we're all hyped about the idea of having a little game jam. So that is what we're doing tonight. But I think, yeah, that would be reasonable to have snapping snap points built into this. But realistically, I mean, you can just do it by dropping down floors, right? Um, so then if we activate this, I should put a title on that menu, switch it to one by one and boom, we got ourselves a one by one. And we'll just go ahead and test with all of them real quick. Three by three, beautiful. Interior, ta-da. And go back to two by two. Cool, it's working. All right, so that's the first part. So then we also want levels. So let's set that up real quick. So we'll do, um, what can I do for visuals? I think I have those workshop plus numbers. I can grab those. So we'll do plot level. Oh, we, we wanted to we wanted to uh, uh, change plot size, and then this one's gonna go level, level, and this one will just be one, two, three. And we'll do building materials last. Uh, building materials. And in theory, we could do like in-betweens in there, like, you know, stages, but that's that's more advanced. This will be fine for now. Um, I guess we'll do them in order. Building materials, one, two, three. Okay. There's our level. And then I think just because it's going to get obnoxious if I have a whole bunch of these, I guess two of them is not the end of the world, but I want them to be distinct. Do we have an alternate material on this guy we can switch? Default, no, there's no default art swap. Yeah, so we're just going to do a sub menu here. We're going to go SS2BT menu. Um, control. Uh, SS2 menu, we'll call this main, I guess. All right, what do you want to change? Because we can also use this for like a reset, right? So we can go. Uh, cancel, um, change plot size, change plot level, and then we could do some other stuff like uh, destroy everything, destroy uh, everything, stuff like that. We're going to hide this for now. I'm not going to do this. It's just kind of an idea of like what we could use this for more things. Uh, so I like to use this to turn stuff off. There's a there's a global, which a global is just like a number that gets stored in the in the game that's always in memory. There's one called true global that's permanently set to one. So if you set it to equals equals zero, you just kind of like disable that thing. And I, I use that all throughout SS2 as a reminder of like that's something we have to deal with still. Uh, so then periodically I'll go search for true global and see if there's stuff that I should be working on. Um, okay, so then this menu here is going to pop up this, and then that will lead to one of those. So now that we're doing that, I guess this button can still just be this, the main controller. So we just do, we do plot level menu, and we do main menu. So then we just get this a little deeper. So this stuff's gonna move into uh, handle plot size function. Come on. And then we move this code in here. 
and then we'll duplicate all this and handle plot level. So then zero is cancel, and then these are going to be, all right, so these are helper refs, that's fine. These will be um, level indicator refs. I'll have to borrow some NIFs from Workshop Framework, or Workshop Plus rather. That's fine, we'll do that in a moment. All right, and we'll have those in the same order. Plot level menu, cool. And then we need a final thing here. Int confirm equals main menu dot show. I want the same kind of thing. Else if I confirm equals one, plot size, else if I equals two, handle plot level. All right, this should get us there. All right, and then while we're waiting for that to load up, let me go into Workshop Plus files and find us some model, models we can borrow here. Uh-oh, where did my meshes go? Here they are. All right, so we've got these layer handles. I guess these can work. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're billboards, okay. Um, hmm, I guess I just want the floating number part. So I can delete you. Eh, we'll leave the little box. It'll just be kind of floating in the air like that. All right, so we're gonna call this one Let's move these into our secondary install. Data meshes, we'll call this level 01. And let's copy this path. All right, this one will be level 02. Hopefully I have a letter B or something for the billing materials. I guess I could do level zero. That, I think you guys are used to that terminology. Level three. And what do we got here? We've got... Yeah, we'll have to just do zero. That's fine. Zero works. And save as level zero. Okay, now let's load these up real quick. Um, I don't. I guess I could do activator or static. Activator will at least will let me put like a script on them if I need to later. So let's change this button to show main menu and then we'll do a this is to bt uh, layer marker or level marker edit level marker zero And we will, let's see, we'll call it level zero. If you highlight it, we're gonna put block player activation. Well, block player activation, will that prevent them from highlighting it? I don't remember. Let's find out. Block player activation, ignored by sandbox. All right, level zero, zero marker. And then this, we want to kind of sit near here, just as a reminder. So we'll put this kind of floating over here. Well, let's unhide the three by three, there we go. Okay, so this will just be kind of sitting right here and we'll put all three of them here. So level zero, zero, edit base. No, we don't add a base. We need to just make three or four of them. Level one.
Uh oh, why is that one a different color? What's going on? We're gonna have to do some more NIF surgery. Hooray! Okay, so let's grab you three, drop you in. Oops, and then what is it? I think it's Control A to align, and then Control Shift A. What are you doing? There it goes, and they're all lined up. And, oh, there we go, and this came up. So we can do, that says to BT. Compile, and actually that's a terrible name for the for the script now, but that's fine. Uh, actually we can do a rename. We'll call it um, show main menu button. And we don't want to keep that file in editor. We want to open up this new one. There we go. And use info. There we go. All right, so now let's grab our menus. Uh oh, where'd it go? Oh wait, it's uh, SS2BT. That's right. Menu main. But yeah, one of the, and then like one of the things we'll probably want to do is have an ability to like take all the items and like offset them, so that way when you finish building a plot and you're like, well, I want I don't want to have to have a save for each building, um, you know, have it move off to the side or something. We'll have to figure that kind of stuff out. But that might be like. Going above and beyond what's necessary. That's that might be too much. Whoops, got a few extra in there. Oh, I just heard a I heard the Ron. Who was that? Eightness time travel. Thank you for the subscribe. All right, and now let's go to number three. Okay, and now we need to set these to, well, this one we want enabled, so we'll hide you. And then these other ones, we'll set initially disabled. And initially disabled. And then initially disabled. Okay, oh, oh, oh. I made the gods angry. All right. Nope. Still, still Windows closed. I wish there was just a the, a button on there when it says all windows need to be closed that just said close them. Just close them for me. Okay. Now we'll go back to data. And in this data folder, we need to grab you. And then we need to mess with our. Oops. BA2 file again. Grab our script. We get rid of the old one. And then we need our meshes folder again. Oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh. There we go. All right. Grab this guy. Pop him in, and now we should have some floating numbers, I hope. Fingers crossed. Close you. Choo choo, how's the tool coming? Uh, we're Right now we're just kind of doing like basic prototype stuff, get some visual aids up so everybody understands kind of what I'm trying to do. And then if this works, then I think the next step is to kind of add proper functionality because I think the next step after this is we don't just want these numbers and um, I need to turn the COC around. I don't know why it's always facing the wrong way. Okay, we can't see the number. Why not? Where is where is my number? All right, so something. Oh, is it? They only show up in workshop mode. Is that how I have those set up? 
No. Why are my billboards not showing up? What did I do wrong? Oh, I wonder if it's a, does it have a custom texture that I'm missing? Could be that. But anyway, if we get this working, the visual aids working, the next step will be what we would want is whatever the player builds is gonna get linked up. Oh, the COC is facing the right way. Oh, I wonder if it was the, oh, you know what I need to do? Just in case I type the wrong one, we're gonna go ahead and put you guys in all the cells. Yep. There you go. Everybody gets a blue marker. There we go. Oop, that one got missed. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, what about you guys? No more aerial death drops for anyone. There we go. Okay. Um, the next thing to do would be make it so that whenever, whatever the player builds, when they use this button and switch it, it basically like disconnects those items from the workshop, but keeps track of them. So that way, when the player switches, or when the player goes to export with workshop framework, it will only see the items that are meant to be for that level. That's kind of the goal. Um, okay, so we gotta figure out these meshes. Why aren't these showing up? Meshes, this is 2BT. Level zero, level one. All right, so what is going on with you guys? Number one, lighting shader problem. Yep, there it is, material workshop plus layer numbers. So I need to grab some more files here. All right, let's go up here. Materials. Uh-oh, my materials are all gone. So we need to extract these from workshop plus. All right, workshop plus. Main, let's see, is there a texture too with these? Layer numbers, yes there is. Okay, extract selected two. Yep, that'll work, go away. And then we need materials, layer numbers, Try to extract selected, okay. All right, now we're gonna have to get, now I gotta manipulate this stuff because I don't want it to overwrite Workshop Plus. So we need to change this to SS2BT. Change you. All right, make sure there's no other. Okay, that's an effect shader. We're good there. Okay, close you. Oh, actually, it's going to be the texture set's going to be wrong too. Yeah. The texture set doesn't technically matter, but if you want to preview it in here, it needs to work. So, level one, good. Level zero. Oops. There we go. And then we need to do All right, so let's see. Where is that material? All right, and I need this guy again, date modified, that's what I'm looking for, here we go, you can have that material, there you go, oh, and then I have to change the NIFs too, ah. all right, meshes, we still didn't do all of those, we need to do two and three still, all right, you, you, Edit string. This is two BT. Level two complete. Level three. Nope. Edit string index. Three, good to go. 
All right, grab these numbers, pop them in. And then we need to do, now we need to make a texture version. So we need tools, archive two. Switch the archive type to DDS. Data textures. BT. Save as building tool dash textures. There we go. And let's make sure we got the SP up to date. Okay. I think we got it. Here we go again. Mod 142, can you have it do a layer switch by menu? I mean, that's kind of the goal is to, like, I don't want to use, so Workshop Plus's layer system has a lot of flaws to it that have been pointed out to me by uh, several people who are doing, like, deep dives onto engine stuff and so it needs to be its layer system needs to be rewritten so i don't want to piggyback on that i want to i'm going to create something much simpler but it's going to be similar to the way the layer system works so it'll be um you know we'll default this system to like hey there's our number so we'll default it to like two by two level one that's probably what most you know that's like the most common building plan type um and then so if we switch change plot level oops I accidentally uh, I didn't do that correctly. I, I think we skipped a step. We also don't think I... No, I think I did that correct. I was going to say, I don't think I set up the... What did I do wrong there? Something's wrong. I was say, I don't think I set up the indicators, but I definitely did. So we got our plot level menu. Oh, there it is. Plot level. It's plot size pointing to plot size. Yes. Main menu. Okay, that was just a simple misclick. All right, let's try that again. So anyway, the idea would be whenever you change any of those, if you change the plot level or plot size, it considers it a new layer. Um, what we might add is another layer to it of like, let the player activate um, some simple layers like uh, decoration and structure, something like that. That could be useful, I think. But that might be, that's not really necessary because there's a step. Now, I guess that, that could be really useful. I'll say there's, there's, we could even go deeper of like decoration, lighting, etc. But there's a real easy step in the, um, once you've got the, the file format between workshop framework and the CK, you have to have this like CSV sheet. You'll end up with all these numbers on it where you can kind of tinker with that. Um, and I think what we're going to try and do is get it so that we can write a well hopefully we can convince pra to write this tool of uh, convert workshop framework exports into um to allow you to import them into a cell so ideally it would be like import them into the ss2 building cell that would be the ideal something like that and we have a similar tool like we have the ability i don't remember if we go from uh we have a tool already for x edit let me check to import something into the CK. I don't know if, I don't think it's a building plan. I think it's like a, the spreadsheet from a building plan, something like that. So let's just load up a random plugin here. Cause we have a whole host of like random exit scripts we've built up over the years. So my thinking is we're just like a few steps away from having one that can take workshop framework exports and import them into a cell. So we do something like click a random cell here. Sure. Uh, where is it at? Apply script. And then we go into our SS2 section. So the way up here. So what do we got here? We've got city plan converter, compact city plan. Some settlements, import building plan as object references on layers. That's almost it. Uh, let's see, SS2 import 
plan to sell. So we have the ability to like import a building plan into a cell. Um, okay, layout importer right here. Import spreadsheet to create a WSF settlement layout form. What is it grabbing here? But what data is it accepting? Layout importer. So this might be, so if we go to like the old, so if I go to like simsettlements.com slash tools slash CP maker, the original one, not the V2. Is that where I had it? There used to be, let's see, choose file, WSFS, let's see here, documents, my games, Fallout 4, sorry you guys can't see what I'm doing, I'm on my second screen, uh, script, user, and then we had that new, that layout we just created, let's see what happens here if I load it up, settlement with a bunch of numbers, okay, that's not here, where is that? Do you guys, any of you guys who have been around for a while, do you guys remember, I used to have a tool somewhere, where you could convert workshop framework export logs and you could do um, like differentials on them. I don't remember where that is. Is that on the C is that on the V2? CPV2 maker? And I'm just misremembering. We used to have like all these extra tools and I can't find them. But anyway, the idea is basically we we get um, we get a tool to import our workshop framework exports directly into the CK. That's the idea. Blop them into a cell, and you're off to the races to start creating a building plan. That's that's my thinking. So what we need is something that just ensures that the items are all at a zero 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 coordinate, which is what we're building right now. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's go test, make sure that the number swapping works, and then we're ready to start setting it up so that it uh, we can like toggle the items like layers. It was on the web creator's checkbox somewhere. Yeah, it seems to be gone, so I don't know if it got lost during because we've changed servers and such over the years. I wonder if that was just in an old version that's been lost to time. But either way, the code wasn't that difficult to write, so. Or, and I probably have it backed up somewhere. All right, so we've got our number one. So then we will switch to Oops, I just realized it still says choose plot size. We'll fix that. Plot level. So we go to building materials. That should switch. There it goes. Insta switch to a zero. Two. Three. And we can still, we should still be able to, oops, that was the same one. Swap between them. So now you can see kind of where I'm going with this. So then you imagine each one of these combinations, plot size plus plot level, would hold its items separately. So they'll all be like, be able to toggle on and off so that you can just see what and then that whatever you see there is what's going to export if you use workshop framework that's what i'm going to try and do next so now we've got the visual aids now we need to do actual functionality here so let's see here first we'll just do the simple visual stuff we'll get that name fixed uh options sure okay I guess we'll name it, uh, instead of button, we'll name it, I'm stalling here, just name, we're thinking about how I'm going to do the next step. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, let's see, uh, building tool controller. All right, so I think, 
We need a controller quest, but I don't want to build one right now because that takes a while to get it set properly. So I think I'm just going to keep using this thing. This is going to be a proxy for our controller quest for now. So we're going to do uh, to do move below to proper controller quest. And for now, we'll just use this. So we're going to go. What are we going to need? We're going to need the ability to grab items linked to this workshop. So we'll just do, we'll just hard code some of this stuff because it doesn't have to be perfect for this little thing. I'm not trying to make this expandable. So workshop script property, um, workshop ref. I forgot to put mandatory on these. Not that it's super important, but I haven't had mandatory in a while. They don't have mandatory in Skyrim and I've been doing a lot of stuff in Skyrim lately. So it's, uh, I almost forgot about mandatory, the beautiful, beautiful mandatory. All right, and then we need a keyword, workshop item keyword. Now let's do some basic functions here. We'll do function uh, get active items. And that's just gonna be object reference, okay, active refs equals workshop ref dot get linked children, I think it is. Let's double check that. Uh -huh. Is this where I have, oh, that'll work. All right, thank God for UESP for hosting a clone of the creation kit wiki because Bethesda has nuked. Oops, I need the Fallout 4 version. Uh, here, nope, that's Elder Scrolls still. The current version of the creationkit.com site is kind of hard to use. Nope, it's not get linked children. Uh, why can't I remember the script name? Object reference. Something with children in the name. Get linked ref children. Oh, I forgot the ref. Get linked ref children on workshop item keyword. And now we've got all the items that are currently active. Okay, so then what else do we need to do? So we basically need to, when it changes, we need to hide all these items. So we need somewhere to store these items because we cannot store gigantic um, arrays. We are limited to small arrays. So, but there's a workaround on that is that we can link things as a placeholder. So what we'll do is we'll do dummy keyword. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll move things from one ref to another. So we'll just use our indicator refs as our control handles. So we'll just, oh no, I can't do that. I need a separate set because we need one for every combination. So we'll spawn our own. That'll work. So we'll do static property X marker auto const mandatory. And we'll keep an array of Say struct. Um, we'll just call it layer. Uh, we'll call it faux layer. And it's going to have a object reference to the K holding ref uh, link holder. We'll call it holder ref. Oh, caps. There we go. And what else do we need? We need to know int i level and int i plot size and we'll store all that information and then we need to do we need to keep a faux layer layer so that's fine um and that's doesn't need to be exposed so that doesn't need to be a property so we'll say function get items from layer and we will know the size and little int plot size and then we do i index equals layers dot find struct i level ai level 
And so that'll find, uh, well, that, there could be multiple of that. So it's just going to, I guess I just do a double loop. I equals zero. Boom B. No. And I level. I'll just keep it simple. While I is less than layers dot length equals mm -hmm. inch j equals zero. Right, now let's do if layers i dot i level equals equals ai level. This is not efficient code, but it's fast to write. So if you're a programmer, don't judge me. <laughs> We're prototyping. Uh, well. J is less than actually no. All we have to do this is really simple. We can do, we don't have to double loop this and layers I because there's not going to be that many. There is a more efficient way to do this, but I'm not I'm not feeling like setting that up right now. Um, and then we will just return actually let's simple let's do this because we might need this. Uh, we're gonna go get index get layer index return i and this will be return negative one um let's see object reference get items from layer again we're going to do anything off of plot size so then we do i layer index equals get layer index. Object reference k item refs equals layers i dot ref children dummy keyword so they'll all be attached to that oh wait layers i k link holder okay so actually what we do is we just return it so return this don't worry it'll all make sense soon <laughs> um okay what else do we need to do um get items from layer uh let's see Move items to layer int AI level AI plot size. Hmm. Move active items to layer. And but we need to first we need like an intermediary actually. Because when we're moving items, I guess we can do get items from layer. So it'll be like switch function make layer active. We would do something like hmm. And there's a lot of inefficiency with me. Keep calling this layer index. Yeah. Int AI layer index move make layer active. So we would do something like hmm. So we would go object reference. Okay, uh, layer item refs equals get items from layer. Okay, we need to do some more stuff here. We need to do int i active level equals one. Int i active size equals, what are we starting with? Two as our active. And our order is one by one, two by two. Yeah, okay, I don't care. We're going deep, guys, we're going deep here. All right, int I level level index 
zero equals that's stupid. Uh, I guess the I only, I only need a level index. That's obvious. I need it for plot size though. Uh, plot size index one by one equals zero. There we go. This will help get rid of magic numbers. Two by two, three by three, int one, two, three. So active size is actually, can I, I don't think I can use a const like this. Let's try though. I think the CK is going to yell at me. Whoa! There's a new feature in Notepad++ I do not like, where it like lets you edit multiple lines at the same time. Got to figure out how to turn it off. All right, so this here, and then when we switch. Confirm plot size. I active size becomes this. There we go. And plot level instead of show index. I active level. There we go. And then I think we wait to activate the layer until they exit the menu. Okay, and then we're gonna need bool b layer changed equals false. Uh, let's see, int i selected layer equals. There's a method to this madness, don't worry guys. You're not supposed to understand it all. Um, if I selected no, not selected layer. Selected size does not equal I. Active size. Boop. There we go. All right, so we need kind of the same setup here. I selected level Okay, so what I'm trying to do is set up like a looping menu where the player can choose both. So we need to go if down here, uh, let's see, will be reshow menu equals true, reshow menu equals false, if be reshow menu var k args equals new var zero oh i know what we need to do we need to move this um and then we're going to go call function no wait show main menu okay args now this all needs to move to a function called show main menu function okay and then when they go to cancel out menu equals false then we go if the layer changed Oh, we need to do something else here too. Uh, bool ab ratio, no. B layer changed. And if we just switch it to false here, b layer changed equals false. And then we do. Make layer active. Ah, and this is where we do the get the layer index. 
Okay, okay. It's all coming together in my head now. All right, so now we need to figure out the layer index. Layer index equals, and we just grab it from this. There we go. If I layer index is greater than or equal to zero. Make, make layer active. And otherwise, the layer wasn't created yet, so we need to create it. So create layer I active level, active size. And we also need to do a, we need to initially create, we need to initialize this. So event on cell load, create layer active level I active size. If, actually no, let's do this a little simpler. Uh -huh. Create the initial layer. We'll do a state. Initial, uninitialized and state go to state. Oh, this needs to be auto on cell load. Go to regular state, create layer. So we're only creating it once. So we need to define this uh, blank in this state. Create layer. Uh, we need our need this. All right, so to create a new layer, we need to do a new faux layer. Layer this layer equals new fo layer this layer dot i level equals yeah, level and actually we need to, let's put some safety code in here if get layer index ai level greater than equal zero return we don't want to duplicate any layers level plot size equals AI plot size and then we need to do create a new reference say uh, holder place at me X marker uh, let's see I need the place at me definition place at me Delete when able is false. Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? Here we go. False. There we go. And then we do this layer dot link holder ref equals k holder ref. And then layers dot add k, uh, this layer. There we go. Got our layer. So now we get back to this. That was quite the detour. Um, get items from layer. AI layer index. So we're going to first grab all the items that are already on the layer. Then we're going to grab all the active items. K active item refs. Oop, got an extra Z in there. And then we'll use that to grab get active items. And then we're just going to so we're going to have to disconnect one group. So we'll disconnect the we'll disconnect them both, I guess. So we'll just do that. Uh, Disconnect. Disconnect items from link holder. Hmm. Item ref. Dummy keyword. And then active item refs. Workshop item keyword. Function disconnect. Object reference AK items keyword K keyword it's 
Sorry if I'm ignoring chat, guys. I'm in the zone here. All right, so we're disconnecting, so this should be pretty easy. We just do, uh, hmm. Yeah, we do AK items I dot set linked ref none AK keyword. That'll disconnect it. All right, and then we do connect items to link holder. And we'll do K okay, layer item refs are going to connect connected to workshop ref on workshop item keyword. And then the active items are going to move over to whoop. Active items are going to move over to the layer layer index dot link holder ref on dummy keyword. So we're just swapping everything. And we also need to, then we need to take the active one, we need to disable all these as well. So like, hmm, yeah, we'll do a bool disable equals true. And for the these ones, we actually don't want to disable them, we want to enable them, because these are the ones we're going to, I guess we'll do it on the other side, it doesn't really matter, we're going to do it in one of these loops. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it a separate loop. I, it's it's a little bit less efficient, but it'll keep the code clean. Um, so then this one is we need a object reference uh, link to ref set linked ref to there on a keyword. Okay, and then finally we'll do a um, Disable refs, and actually we're going to do this up at the top. We'll first toggle the visibility, so we'll go disable refs, okay, layer item refs, enable, oops, I got that backwards. Uh, let's do this. Toggle visibility true. We want these to be visible, and then these ones we want to be hidden. False. Get rid of that rogue one. All right. Toggle visibility. Object reference. Okay. Item refs. Oops. I just realized I. Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Let's get that consistency back. Bool. AB enable equals true. And then we will cycle through these. AK item refs. If AB enable. Dot enable. False. Else. Oops. Disable false. Okay. Toggle visibility. Swapping them. Move items to active layer. Move items to layer. I don't actually need this function because make layer active kind of does what we need it to. Okay, so this will handle. This feels good. The only thing now is we need to dynamically detect when the player is building items. Let's let's first fix all the bugs in this, and then I'm gonna give myself a note of what's next. So um, after we get this working, then it's going to be. Uh, we need to detect scrapping, detect building. Um, and then for building, we want to add to active layer and scrapping remove from active layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and actually we don't even need to remove from the active layer. Because we're using the active layer, we're just storing them on the workshop item, which is the default. We actually don't need this, which is awesome. And we don't need this either. We actually don't need it. The way we wrote this, the items are automatic. Yeah, oh, this is great. This is so much simpler than what I did for Workshop Plus. I like this. Um, where it's gonna get complicated is we add in the layer idea of, of uh, decorations and structure, which we might do, but for now, this is a good enough prototype. 
All right, let's see. Is that the name of it? Main menu button? All right, I'm sh there's no way this compiles correctly. Yeah, so it would be insane if it did. All right, uh, conscripts may not contain data. Yeah, that makes sense. So my attempt to default this to here doesn't work. I have to do it manually. Uh, so we'll do one, two by two. That's our default. All right, and I will check in with chat as soon as I get this compiled, and then I will feel I will feel good. All right, conscripts are not contained. Data script files cannot be defined. Oh, this is a const. Duh. Get that out of here. All right, let's try this again because I would prefer to not have this magic number here. If we can, we don't want it to be const because we need to store data on this. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That was still still can't do that. Two by two. Any input auto, it's not auto, what is it? It is state uninitialized what? I know I've used this before. Um, let's search for state in the CK website or the USP version of it. State reference, what is the auto? Yeah, auto is it. Oh, it's at the beginning. Okay, so I gotta put auto. Here, auto state uninitialized. Oh man, if we get away with that few bugs in the initial thing. Okay, there we go. There's more. <laughs> it's like there's there's no way. I'm not that good. Even when I'm in the zone. Alright, let's go. Uh, layers I layer index. There was our mistake there. Okay. Nope. Compile. Not rename. All right, 155, what do we screw up there? 155, object reference. So one of these is not actually returning an array. Variable layers undefined, 211. What did I do wrong on 211? Layers, forgot the plural. Oh man, are we are we about to get it done that quickly? It says so. I don't believe that it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. All right, let's see. Let's see if I'm a wizard today. Do I have wizard powers today? Because if this works, I'm gonna feel like it. I'm gonna have to go buy a lotto ticket. Oops. Well, I can't type the word scripts, so scratch that. Um, okay, put you in here. Say, come on, save. There, I guess I could have just didn't control S. Uh, let's see, building tool main. Pop that in here, and then I don't think we changed anything in the plugin, but just in case. Grab you, grab you. Whew, that was a lot of that was a lot of coding. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so now to test this, we're gonna need to build a few things. Let's see if they get uh, disappeared correctly. So we'll go to TJM for the... All right, so now the idea is, if this is working, I'm, gonna have to, I'm just gonna build one item just to do a quick test. So we will build a structure, would prefab, sure, we'll just plop a prefab on here. So the player would do something like that come over to here and be like, okay, level one, complete. Look at that beauty. Change plot level, change it to level two. We don't want to change anything else. No dice, didn't work. All right, well, let's check the, let's see if the linked row. Oh, I didn't, I know what I didn't do. I didn't set up a, uh, the dump, the keywords. I didn't set up all the properties on this thing. Oop. So we need our dummy keyword. So keyword. SS2 BT uh, dummy link. And we need to go in here, edit the base. I forgot to set up all these nice properties. 
Oh, we just added. There we go. There's our dummy keyword. Oh. And this guy. Oh, we can autofill all here. We'll get a couple of these. And grab our workbench. And sometimes when I autofill while selected on something, it doesn't seem to hold, so I'm going to double check it. Okay. That is a very common source of bugs from any mod that uses scripts, which is most mods. Very few of them use as many as I do, but uh, most mods end up with a little bit of script at least. And forgetting to fill out the properties is very common. Oh, and actually, because we're gonna, we need, we probably need the workshop to be initialized. We're gonna go into a normal save, not just COC. Was I typing fast? You guys, are, you guys are talking about typing speed. I've never considered myself a fast typer. I still like. I never learned proper typing. So like, I don't use the, my fingers correctly. Like, I think I use them all now. For the longest time, I went years where I've just used my four fingers, uh, like my two index and two middle. Now I definitely use more than that, but I never learned some proper typing. All right, let's. All right, we need TGM here. Okay, let's try this again. There's our beautiful level one, done already. Contest in the bag. Change plot level, we'll go to level two. Exit out of the menu. And nothing happened. So, let's do get linked ref workshop item keyword. Okay, that is linked correctly. All right, so we need to add some debug to the code here. See what's going on. All right, so first let's make sure that this is happening. Uh, let's see, let's make sure our initial cell load create layer is happening. So I'm just gonna do pop-ups. Message box, creating initial layer. Oh, I think I already know what the problem is. Um, create layer. So we forgot to initialize the array. So if Layers equals none or layers dot length equals equals zero layers equals new faux layer zero. I think this is gonna be a problem. That is definitely wrong. I think I left that pop-up in there so we can at least get this first debug message box and then we will if we still doesn't if it doesn't work double back and flood this thing with them
minimalist approach to plot design yeah <laughs> right now we're in we're in prototype mode Just need the basics need the proof of concept of this working and then we'll see if I can uh, drop the drop the source code and the mod as we did it into the plot of Palooza uh, channel we have choo choo and hope uh hope if somebody runs with it because i will not have time to finish this out i mean i will like if on a long enough timeline i will but if you guys want it for the jam somebody else is gonna have to take a run at it okay here we go again so we got our initial layer oh you know what before we even get into that i can do i can confirm that the layer got created at least yep first layer got created and then let's see, it should have no, oh, I have no way to check that. Um, okay, so we can't do anything yet. So we'll go in here, let's get our prefab in. And now there's nothing stopping me from putting the items over here, there never will be. That's gonna be on players to just be careful about that type of thing. All right, and then change plot size to one by one, exit. And our item didn't disconnect. Okay, so we got to do some uh, get linked ref workshop item keyword. And how about the ss2bt uh, dummy link? Is it, is it attached to anything? No. Okay. Uh, let's do one more check on something. Let's go. Hmm. Check our papyrus log actually, and see if we just have some silly errors right away. Oh, typing error helps. All right, going down to the bottom here. That is not us. Not us. Okay, none of this is jumping out as from here. Okay, so let's add some more debugs. We're creating an initial layer. We've confirmed that that's working. Um, create layer. Okay, so here's where here's a problem we have. We need to change this around. If less than zero, create the layer. And no matter what, we want to make the layer active because the first layer wouldn't have existed yet. So. Uh, so here we'll do this equals and we'll make note with the st stupid double line typing. No one wants that. Get out of here. All right, and we'll make create layer return its index because why not? Return uh, return die existing index equals. Doop. Return layers dot length minus one. And I'll have to put in like some locking code in here because otherwise this, if people were going too crazy with clicking buttons, they could break the hell out of this. But again, that's polished. Oh, I'll put that on my list of to do. Uh, let's see, we need to do, oh, I almost lost my, my helper thing there. Uh, we need to set up controller quest add locking to layer swap layer creation slash swapping okay update our scripts and grab our favorite cell name and off we go Someone equals prod, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't have to be. He's the most qualified, for sure.
All right, here we go. Oh good, we start with some wooden still. Don't even need the TGM. Alright, let's see. Change plot size. And we'll go one by one. Uh, what do you want to change? Nothing. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. Debug message box as it is. Alright, let's, let's flood this bastard and see where we're getting stuck. Okay, so we need to do message box creating layer. Oh, I wonder if it's the layer change isn't getting set here. Change state is true. Okay, I know that's probably getting set. Okay, so... Alright. Layer changed. And then we'll also do the opposite, else... No layer change detected. See, make layer active. All right, so we're grabbing, get that, get active items. Oh, here we go. Here's a problem. Boop. Return. That's part of it. All right, so then this I'm going to trace because this is going to be a mess to do. So we're going to go uh, toggle visibility. dump out the items. This isn't going to actually dump them. This is just going to put print out the first handful of them. And then we'll do the same here. On the keyword. some debug and I think I actually fixed part of the problem which was the we weren't actually returning the active items so there was no way it could have detected those and moved them around now if any of you guys who likes to build in the game if we get this working at night which I think I will I think I'm close enough where I'll I'm, I'd be happy to uh, keep going until we get this last little bit working. Um, I am happy to post this somewhere public and you guys can go play with it. And then give feedback for later. Because if I, if, if I, if no one picks up the torch to finish this, um, I'll circle back to it eventually. Just in de not in time for the uh, contest. So, <sighs> yeah, this is this is a this is a good first step. The prototype of this. Um, there's still a, there's the biggest hurdle after this is the the getting the date like. 
even this basic concept would be a good start and like it could be polished up a ton of different ways um like that little list i posted was kind of like the bare minimum there's a lot more we could do beyond that but then i think the hardest part after this like that stuff that i've got that i put on that to-do list is pretty easy the hard stuff will be the creating conversion software to take the workshop framework export and make it into a readable format but like i said i, I bet chat gpt could do it in a couple of a couple of turns um okay the part it will struggle it will struggle with x edit scripts but we already have some x edit scripts to do what we want we really just need to get it why well, won't let me build this what's going on here um, we have x edit scripts to get items into i don't understand what's happening why can't i why suddenly i can't build god mode it is there we go all right apparently i don't really have 10 and 10 steel available Okay, changing to three by three, exiting, layer changed, creating layer for level one size two. Items are gone. Okay, so now we will build something different. So we can, here we go, here's our three by three. Now we switch back to our two by two, right? And see if our other house is there. Exit, layer changed. No, it's gone forever. <laughs> All right, how about back to church, to level three, or plot size three rather? Layer changed, and it brought back the first item. <laughs> okay, we got some mistakes in here somewhere. We're getting closer though. Plot size, go back to two by two. Okay, so we've got them reversed. We've got an inversion here somewhere in my logic, but it's working. Okay, what are we doing wrong here? So get items from layer, K okay, layer items, get disconnected. So that is from our active layer. We're grabbing our active items. We're going to disable our active items, disconnect, and connect to the layer holder. Disconnect layer from the dummy. And connect to a workshop ref on workshop item keyword. This all seems correct. All right, what am I doing wrong here? Let me think. Okay, so we we'll grab the items. This should be blank to start. So I guess for each of these, we can add a whoa, whoa, whoa! Enough with the double click. All right, I can do. I can add a bunch of uh, not length is greater than zero checks here. So these are the toggle visibilities, disconnects, and reconnects. doing wrong here so we get to layer changed it creates the layer we try and make the layer active so we get down here so let's think of the sequencing we did so we basically went we started at 1-1 one, one, and then we moved to 2-1 and then back to 1-1 one, one. so we built we built a uh, small item, built large item, 
And then when we swapped back... There was nothing. There was nothing, right? We swapped here, and then there was nothing. Then we swapped to here, and there was the small item. And then we swapped back to here, and then there was the big item. So why did that happen? So we built a small item, then we switched over to two, one. This disappeared. We built the large and we tried to switch back. All right, let's check our log here. Might be getting into territory where I'm too tired to follow the logic. All right, let's see here. Let's try and follow at least the last one. So, so we connected. Connect items to link holder. Workshop script on key workshop item. Oh, but I didn't I didn't keep the save, so I don't actually know what item is which here. All right, let's see if I just have a mistake somewhere simple. So active size is under size. Yeah, nothing's jumping at me, so I think this might just be a case of I am too tired to uh, figure out where my logic is flawed. We made it pretty far, though. We're like, this is like so close there. After I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to like jump on here and be like, oh, this was easy. This was, a I'm sure it's something really stupid. It's going to be like, I'm assigning the level to the plot or, or like the size to the level, something like that by mistake. Or I've got like one of these calls reversed. Create layout. Let's double check if that's that. We've got root on f always level first, size second. Okay. Get layer index. We're always doing level first, plot second. Hmm. Let's try this. I'm gonna try one more thing. Uh, debug dot trace. Bunch of dots. Make layer active. AI layer index. Oops, forgot this. And then we want to print out the actual layer details. So then we're gonna go make layer active. Plus layers, AI layer index. And we're going to print out, let's say, layer contents. And we're going to print out I active level equals. Let's print all this and see if there's like some sort of disconnect. I active size. 
All right, this feels like a good print spot to see what's going on here. Compile. All right, if nobody else saw any mistakes I made, I think this is our last, our last attempt to see if we can get this tonight. Menu counting one through four, not zero through three. Zero was canceled. Hold on, let's check here. So I've got zero is canceled for plot size, but I'm, see, I'm, I'm subtracting one from the menu. So I'm, so selected size will be one minus one will be zero for the first index. So I think I've already, I've accounted for that already. Did I forget to do that here? No, I've got the icon for minus one. Because the menu index is zero based, but the first one is canceled, so we ignore it, and then we subtract one from our to get our index. ChatGPT is in the middle of a nervous breakdown. Uh oh. Oh man, the stream like the the little stream preview is so far behind. Holy cow. Creating initial layer. Wait a second, I think it just I think I might have it figured out. So So let's step through the, what I'm about to do here. So I'm about to hit change. So I'm going to change one of these things. It doesn't really matter. It shouldn't matter which one. That's going to trigger layer changed. Layer change is going to be detected here. That's going to grab my new layer index, create a new layer, try and make that layer active. So then it should hide my item and my item should end up connected to the layer. So we can grab this reference and see what it links to. So get linked ref workshop item keyword should link us to the workbench. All right. Now let's see where it ends up linked after we do this. So we'll just do keep doing change plot size, exit, okay, it's blank. And now we do, this should be linked to nothing, yep. But then if we do ss2bt dummy link, it should be linked to something, it is. And then we go check our log. And we wanna look at the make active oops, or is it make layer active here we go okay so we're making layer index one i active level one active size equals zero that would be correct right zero is our plot type one by one the layer says that it does match level matches plot size matches and we've got our ref which we are correctly linked to okay so that is all correct so now we need something tiny here. We'll grab a little, yeah, one of these guys for our one by one. Boop. Okay, so now let's, all right, we're gonna write down this ID. Oh, actually, I already got it right there. So we can do prid ff002998. 
And then we'll grab this one. We'll record this as well. Frid. Actually, and that one is... Uh... So what would that be? That's going to be on level one, two by two. Is that one up there? Uh oh. Uh oh. Is my game crashing? There it goes. Level one, two by two. Okay, that's a bad command. That's fine. We just wanted to label it. And then we're going to do prid ff 11 27 And that is level one, one by one. So now we have these references we can go back to. So now let's switch back to two by two. Change plot size, two by two, exit, layer changed. All right, I was missing. This is the exact same behavior we had last time, but let's find out what's going on here. Make layer active, should be a make layer active zero. Yes, it is. Active level one, active size one, that is correct. So now we need to find out what happened to our buddy, prid ff002998. What are you doing? Are you disabled, first of all? Yes. Get linked ref SS2 BT dummy link. And that is linked still to the same thing. Hmm. Okay, so it's still linked to A54. Toggle visibility, disconnected links to items. Oh, I wonder if this is like a, because the items are disabled, their links are returning nothing. Something like that. I think that's what it is, because I'm seeing in here there's no toggle visibility true showing up here when we do make like layer active. So I think when we do this get Hmm, now that can't be true because otherwise, why is it when we toggle again, we end up switching the items correctly? Get items from layer. Hmm, very confused. So now if we switch back again, let's see if we get the same behavior. Switch back to one by one. And then we get back our two by two item. So it can still fetch the items when the link is wrong, but it's grabbing the wrong items for some reason. Let's see here. Talk of visibility true. Oh, and they got soundscape emitters from SS2. <laughs> um, oh, that's why the game is tanking. Why I'm getting that's all locked up, because the soundscape is trying to place down emitters. That's funny. Let's put that on our to-do. Um, add no soundscape keyword to our workbench. We have a keyword to prevent the soundscape from happening in certain settlements. That's not necessary in here. Oh, I wonder if that's it. I wonder if it's just like the traffic from the soundscape is like causing all sorts of problems. Let's assume that's the case real quick. Let me look up how do I prevent the soundscape. I don't actually remember. All right, let's see here.
create emitters. Oh, I don't have a preventative keyword. That's not cool. All right, so we need to add that. Um, if AK Workshop Ref has keyword, do not use Soundscape return. All right, let's see, we need to add that here. Okay, I can't do anything with this in this plugin. I don't know that that's the problem still. I feel like this is a scapegoat. I do want to add this feature, but I don't think that's the actual problem. All right, guys, I think I am out of brain power for the night, so. Um, I'll probably tinker with this a little bit in the morning, see if I can get the last little bits figured out. If I do, those of you guys who are uh, in the in the builder circle and stuff, I'll circulate this tool around. Maybe I'll drop it on the forum so people can tinker with it if they want to play with it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I think next week uh, we'll be back to playing again. And then after that, it'll be the 6th. And then on the 6th, I will be showing you guys how to make building plans in the creation kit. And, you know, hopefully somebody will have this tool finished as well. And you know, a lot of the steps I'll be showing on March 6th will be you'll need them even if you are building in the game. So it'll be useful for anybody who wants to compete in the game jam on the 9th and 10th. And then uh, on the and then after that, I think I'll be back to playing once again. So kind of a week of play, week of moddy stuff back and forth for a little bit. All right, guys, I will catch you all next week.